yeah, that's scary. Yo, 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 yeah, that's scary. Yo, 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 yeah, that's scary. Yo, 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 yeah, that's scary. Top five, dead alive, only came to terrify. Every topic scary, we can lead the bravest paralyzed. Hope you're not at home alone, better keep the lights on. But if you love adrenaline, then welcome to the fright zone. Willie is the leader, the visionary dreamer. Gerard got the joke, scaredy cat cat, the screamer. You won't get this work if you're scared, go to church. This podcast is scary as you heard it here first. Ah. And he said that to me because I was like, I'm just excited that Jeepers Creepers is here. You know, I, I want to see the character again. But when he, because he's a huge lover of Jeepers Creepers. Yeah, 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 that's scary. Yeah, 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 that's scary. Yeah, 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 that's scary. Yeah, yeah. Yo, what's going on, guys? Welcome to Yup, That's Scary, your new Halloween horror and haunted house podcast. I'm your host, Willie May. And today's show, we have um, the gang and the gang and I will be going through Fangoria's Chainsaw Awards nominations as we vote on and make our predictions on who will win in 2023. So um, that being said, bring in my co-hosts, Gerard and Brent. What's up, guys? What's up? All right. So I just want to, <laughs> I just want to say this. Um, um, Cat will be coming onto the show. She's running a little bit late, but we're so excited to have her. Um, I'm so excited. Yeah, I'm excited I, too. It's been a minute. I know. Been I've minute. been looking forward. To, once I heard she was coming back this week, I've been so excited. I don't think I slept a week. <laughs> no, you didn't sleep, sleep a week. I know you didn't. I know. Yeah, it worked. But I'm just excited for this because when I found out that um, Fangoria nominations came out and we get to vote, I, w- I was ecstatic. And I think we we had to do a show around that because these are films, um, the nominations um, are films that we just recently saw and we loved. So I want to be a part of that. So Fandoria, uh, Fangoria, my door I could not believe I said that. But that's that's been that's sort of off as a magazine, right? Like in like Yes, like like Horror Hound, Fangoria, it's been around uh, for a very long time. Uh, they do um, horror, uh, movies, makeup, all that good stuff. And uh, yeah, and they they kind of uh, you know hold the pillar in the horror community. So I'm so excited. And I reached out to them and hopefully um, they will be on our show just to talk about more about the uh, the award show, uh, but I did reach out to them as well. So I'm so yeah, excited. I, I think I can remember uh, having some of their older magazines. I think my dad yeah. had some of them, like in the closet. Like they had like the, I don't, don't, hopefully I'm not misquoting. They had like a, sometimes they're like yellow and they had like some type of like a, almost like a goosebumpy feel cover sometimes. Yeah. I was so excited to see some of their um, antique uh, magazines, I should say. Um, I didn't see my dad's old. No, yes, he is. <laughs> Listen, I didn't have them uh, when I was um, back in the day, of course, because I probably wasn't around. But let me just say this. I know a few horror uh, friends that had some antique magazines, and they would keep them in their closets or in like a shoe box. And I would love going through them and just checking them out and seeing what was happening back then. Um, but yeah, those are the true horror people. It's always with the uh, the National Geographic books they used to you used to get. Yes. You know what I'm talking about? Those yellow ones. Yes. We used to have a stack of those things. But never with the phone books. Remember the phone books? No, I'm not that old. The phone books would be in your kitchen. Oh, shut up, Gerard. Come on now. Yeah, I think your mom still have a phone book in her kitchen. What are you talking about? What's up? I, it's Brent? right here. It is my phone book. How are you, Brent? You're kind of quiet over there. Yeah, I'm just listening today. You're listening today? Yeah, let's see what y'all have to say about this. Huh? Oh, 
Okay. Uh, this man is tired. I guess. I'm tired too, but come on now. All right, so we have a great show for you today. Oh, I just want to start off with our current events. Uh, you know, you know, I, I scour the, the web and try to figure out, like, what is happening, what people are talking about, and to get our feedback, our, you know, our comments on the topic. So Are we on the same page? Um, well, let's see. Let's do it. So here we go. Uh, going back to my notes here. Okay, guys, so my New Year's re resolution was to hop into the gym and start working out. But now I think – let me read my notes again. Okay, guys, so my New Year's resolution was to hop into the gym and start working out. But now I think to – I think – what the heck did I look? I just I just pulled a uh, Gerard. Uh, I know, like that's, that's what I did. You know, I am so sorry, guys. Uh, so I'm just going to say it. <laughs> so I've done away with my New Year's resolution uh, of going to the gym because of these facts. Watching horror movies reduces risk of obesity, and the body tends to burn calories while watching horror movies. What do you guys think? Is this true? Well, first off, I'm glad you said you're going to say because this is an audio show. Right. You're not going to be able to sign in this. But I think this is true because it's going to raise the heart rate. You know, if you can naturally keep your heart rate raised consistently in a safe manner, you will burn more calories. It's, it's proven. That's why some of the uh, dietary pills they make and all that nowadays, you can sit and you sweat. And it's due to increasing your heart rate because science and stuff, you know. Yeah. I'm not a scientist. No, but... but but listen, scientists does claim uh, uh, they say you can burn up to 184 calories in one sitting of a horror movie. Isn't this crazy? Yes, but then you got to remember, I'm eating 1,200 calories worth of popcorn. That's not including the soup butter I put on it. Because if you're going to a scary movie and you don't have that buttery popcorn that makes your fingers sticky icky, you got to sneak the little wet wipes in, you ain't doing it right. And that's my opinion. Put it on a napkin. Put mustard on it. You put mustard on popcorn? Yeah, it's really good. Really? Yeah, it's a little, it's a little, it's a little nasty, but and not not nasty. It's get you know, get your hands dirty. Just put some gloves on if you don't like getting your hands dirty. I don't. I think I'll get weird looks if I'm sitting there putting gloves on in the movie theater. You know, <laughs> just sitting there like, all right, all right, sweetheart, could you on a first day, all right, sweetheart, get the Frenches out, just. <laughs> Oh, oh, moving on, along, Brent, handle my slides for me. Moving along, I have uh, Netflix. Netflix pass. Uh, Netflix will will reportedly end free password sharing by the end of March, according to several reports. Fortune and Business Insider both reported the company recently shared the news in a letter to the shareholders. In the letter, Netflix said they plan on ending the free password sharing within the first quarter of 2023. So that is soon, you guys. How? According to the Fortune, Netflix said that more than 100 million households are using accounts paid for by other people. Hmm. We all know that. We all been there. Me. Yeah, but you I don't pay for my Netflix. Netflix. Okay. Netflix said in the letter that the practice undermines our long-term abilities to invest in and improve Netflix. What do you guys think about this? How can they, though? Really and truly, how can you prove it? Because let's say I'm paying for Netflix. Let's say I'm a genuine Netflix payer. First off, I do a switcheroo. I pay for HBO Max. My boy pays for Netflix. We share. That's how you do it. Don't pay okay. for cable. It's ridiculous. Second off, <laughs> don't take legal advice from me. Oh. Like, let's say let's say I have a Netflix account and signed into my smart TV, right? I'm paying for it, right? But then I'm at work or I'm, God forbid, somewhere else. I want to watch on my laptop. I want to watch on my cell phone. How are you going to tell that it's me signing on to this thing? You know, how are you going to tell? Well, I do know that some of the sign-ins has kind of gotten a little bit in advance. Because they got the text they, messages, right? They know, they know you're, you're, they look at the, the browser, they look at the computer. And they look at the, the geographic location. So, so what the, I think what they're going to do is they're going to just limit it. So, so that you can if I get less people off, off the account. Or am more, I going to have to tell uh, Netflix if I travel to St. Louis or something and I want to watch Netflix in the hotel or I want to watch Netflix 
I get an Airbnb, I sign it to my Netflix on that thing. I sign out before I leave because I'm not an idiot. But, you know, it is what it is. Like, That's a good question. That's a good comment. Um, um, but how? If you put it on, like, let's say if you're Airbnb and you're in a different location you put and you put your account onto the TV, um, I think it's, it falls into that same category as sharing, password sharing. Would it, would it clock out after a week? Like, I could understand. Like, after a week, it clocks out. That would be understandable because I can find a way around it. Mm. But the sec that sounds so bad, but it's the reason. But, like, what if I go... If I go see a friend in another state, for I go stay there for a month, you know, people have traveling jobs now. You got truck drivers who use Netflix. We got uh, traveling uh, first responders, you know, RN, CNA, LPNs. They get paid and they travel. They want their Netflix because they bring their laptop and they travel. Okay. We have a shortage. So stick up for your people. Listen, I'm not, I'm not from Netflix, but this is my I'm a my, doctor. my prediction on it. They're going to give you a limited amount of of whether it's two, three, maybe four password sharing, but you can't do five, seven, eight, you know what I mean? So they're going to limit the amount of times you can enter your account into devices. I, that's what I'm thinking. And then what's so crazy about it is that when you go into, um, when you go into um, to uh, Netflix, they would actually tell you, Whatever, what device are you signing in? Is it a mobile device? Is it a computer? Is it, so they're really trying to keep tabs on who's all logging into. Um, yeah, but that's normal. Like my, what you know what they might do? They might go off the cell phone, right? Because my buddy, when I log into, like, let's say I log into Netflix on my laptop, it texts him, "Hey, is this okay?" And he goes, "Yes." But are they going to be like, hey, this man's a couple miles away, and you're saying, yeah. That might be where they catch you. But that's not fair. If I'm paying for Netflix, and I got a, let's say, God, I have an old lady, and she wants to sign into Netflix, it's my family plan, you know? Right. You know, I'm paying for it. Right. I'm not paying for Netflix just for me, for on my devices. I'm paying for Netflix so the people in my household. Listen, Netflix been around. I mean, they were the first streaming platform. They were the ones that kind of created this buzz. Now you have networks are starting to develop their own platforms, mm. such as Disney, Paramount Plus, MGM, H HBO. Now MGM is getting in. in on Shutter, that. Hulu. Shutter, right. Then you got the, the third um, the streaming platform that's coming in. So listen, um, they're. The oh, then they're going to do ads too. They, I've they heard. Are, Yes, and they're bringing it back. So look, they are the first, and they are the first to see problems occur. And I really think that this is a problem because where do they make their money on? Membership. And uh, because of that, they don't want to go to commercials, but then now they're going to go to commercials, so they're getting money from commercials and they're getting money from memberships. They're the first ones to do it, um, and they can, you know? A lot of these other platforms are going to go through the same problems as Netflix, but Netflix, because they're the first ones, they're curving and they're trying to adjust. And I think this is going to shake up a lot of people' um, enjoyment on Netflix. But Netflix is going to teach us how to share the password, and that's what's going to happen. And so there's nothing you can do about it. So here's what I'm wondering: Do you think this is going? To, do you think this is happening that they got to do all this stuff because the market is so saturated and everybody's everywhere else now yes amazon because think about this right right and their, their, their pool of movies is now more limited because now hbo took all their stuff now mgm's taking all their stuff disney took all their stuff and they're pulling 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 right and here's the thing now they got to produce more of their own stuff to keep it or they're going to end up like to be and a couple other which are free to be free it's free cable and stuff but let me tell you something they play like i i've watched to be too because Ain't nothing better to do at 2 a.m. to put that on and fall asleep to. And you get to watch like shows from 2002 and stuff. You get to watch old movies. I right. They do have a channel on Tubi, not going to lie. It's nonstop 24-7, the monsters, the classic black and white ones. Yes, my mom was watching that. Um, yeah, so yeah. It's fantastic. Yeah, Tubi is good. Tubi actually started to, um, because of the, of the longevity of free streaming platform, they are now starting to buy their own shows. Yeah. Now they, they just they they made their money back. Um, the 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 company's going upside. It's it's going good. 
and now they can use that money and invest in shows. So they're coming up with new TV shows and new movies, and I'm excited for that because Tubi, now Tubi, and now they're getting they're trying to get their 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 hands into the into the pot here. No, no, yeah. Tubi. Here's what I need. Here's what I need. Thank God you do the monsters. I love it, and I think they do Adam's family too. I think they flop back and forth. But here's what I need. Personal, off show, just me and you, Tubi. I need the Andy Griffin show 24 7. Oh. And, then, and then I need the MASH 24 7. I'm addicted to those shows. I'll watch them every day. Please put them on 24 7. Thank you. I love you. I'm so mad at that because you know who watches us? The executives at Tubi. So, so, so that's so, yeah. The, the public I, that. I don't know. I use them. Like, there's nothing wrong with it. I just want MASH and Andy Griffin show. Please, if you can do it. Do but, it for me. But getting back to Netflix, Gerard. Um, oh, yeah. I think you're right about this. There's now now the uh, streaming industry is now saturated with all the networks coming in. Uh, the deals that they're making, the deals that they're making behind closed doors to get movies and TV shows, series that are awesome in there. I mean, net, the, now the, the Netflix has very little to choose from. So, so you know, and then and then what's great is there's all these creators out there. So there's gonna be plenty of content for them to buy but you're right i mean there's so i mean you got hulu you got yeah. disney plus they're all in it doing the same thing that netflix uh netflix pretty much invented was uh, to get the streaming platform going in. your final thoughts on this netflix in my opinion i think they're doing this whole thing just to get back at me because i refuse to return retillion on dvd i still got the sleeve you ain't getting it i don't even live at that house that i rented it from when you when I rented it, you ain't getting that DVD back. But I just want to say this: I was <laughs> an account, um, a Yep the Scary account for all the streaming platforms, and just give y'all the password so y'all could just go in and watch these movies. But now, what do you think? You know, now this this is kind of botched. I don't think we can do this now with Netflix changing the password, Jerry. Maybe maybe they have like a corporate account set up. You know, I don't know. Maybe you know it doesn't have to, to figure out and see, but. All right, so what's next? We got the U UFOs. <clears throat> the past couple of weeks, we have been seeing UFO sightings all across the world becoming visible in clouds. The, troop, the top U.S. spy agency said Thursday, 366 new cases of identified aerial phenomenons have been reported to the U.S. intelligence agency since March 2021. The 366 newly added reports join a catalog of 144 cases that were documented over the previous 17 years. The total record of bizarre aerial activities now sits at 510. The, the Office of Directors of National Intelligence wrote in an unclassified 11-page report that multiple agencies found that the flying objects demonstrated unusual flight characteristics of performance capabilities. Uh, the classified version of the report, which is required by the National Defense Authorization Act of the fiscal year 2022, was submitted to Congress. What do you guys think about this? And what would you do? What, yeah, what, what do you guys think about this with all these UFO signs? I know you guys seen some on like TikTok, on Instagram, in the news. What do you guys think about this? Brent, what do you think? I want to hear your opinion first. I want to. I want to rope you in this conversation well i'm a big ufo alien believer guy i'm mm -hmm. always have been i'm like really big and unexplained i know you you told us that you've been probed by that alien once continue <laughs> oh good uh but you know aliens you know i i really feel like they're real i mean the government is hiding something from us that 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 we do not know and i want more insight on it i think they need a uh give us a little bit more than just a little couple words on the internet uh but i know i understand they can't really leak anything because it is the government but i, I truly do believe in aliens and i do believe in the sightings that people were seeing i don't think it's a fake are you saying like are you are you such a believer that those old school tabloid magazines like the old men in black do you believe any of that stuff if you know what i'm talking about like they'll the men in black, they used to go buy that newspaper like uh, Bat Boy, a, uh, the, the alien took my cow or whatever. Oh, yeah. I know I know what you're talking about. Yeah, yeah a little bit, you know. 
Okay. Can someone take Brit, take your messenger off the browser, please. I don't have messenger on my browser. It's all there, there gone. Is, there is a messenger on the browser. That my, my, my phone's on mute and my messenger is not even on my screen. Please check all the tabs. Yeah, I'm clear. Yeah. I'm cleared. I have nothing. Now, here's something I heard. Think about this. It's about if, UFOs. We, if UFOs, right? If UFOs are real and there's people who and there's other dimensional beings who can space travel, right? I don't believe there's any aliens on the moon or anything. I don't even think Mars. Because at that point we've seen enough. We sent stuff to Mars, right? Mm-hmm. Even though, excuse me, I'm about to have a hiccup real quick. Uh oh. Even though that is light years and light years away and so far away, we're still going to send stuff up there, right? I believe that there are speak aliens out there and they're able to space travel, come to us and observe us. We're like, um, kind of like gorillas, gorilla, you, know? you know? Like we see gorillas. Like when we watch a, a gorilla and observe them, it's interesting because they're so close to us and so much primal and they're able to work. They make tools and stuff now. They're evolving, they're educating their stuff. And they keep getting smarter, right? That's what they see with us. They're like, look at them. They built a rocket. Wow. Do you remember like two million years ago when we did a rocket? Wow. Wow, they keep bombing each other. Man, they got to figure this out. You know, that's what they're doing. And every now and right now. They're trying to understand us, but also we're like, wow, look at them. Fast as ships they got, them UFOs. They're probably, you know, we're thinking the same thing as them. They're just trying to understand us. And we're trying to understand them. My dad, he was telling me something like, uh, they uh, they've been here on Earth before us, before there was human create creation. So, did your dad watch Ancient Aliens? Yes, he does. He <laughs> or are they farming us? Is this like a farmland? And we're just on this land. We farm and be for cattle and like. When we die, we get buried in the ground. Actually, the center of the earth is like this giant machine that teleports the bodies back up. And it's just sending people up to be eaten. Let me say this. Um, piggybacking off of Brent's comment. In the Bible, which, you know, you guys all know my family's been in ministry for a very long time. Religious. We've been in church. We've been in church. I wouldn't say we're religious. We're more spiritual. Um, but in the Bible, it actually says, it talks about essential beings and UFOs and aliens all the time. Really? So, yes, it does. It really does. And so it's so funny because when I read it in the Bible, I never like thought about it. Like, wait, what? But it's in there. It's, it's written in there. Uh, what would you guys do if you saw a UFO? Now, are we saying UFO or are we saying aliens? A UFO. Okay. I would say, so yeah. I've, always, I've always searched for UFOs. I've always wanted to find them. Uh, they don't. They don't come to me. I want to come to them. You know, that's probably how every, most people look at it that way. But they usually, you know, UFO sightings are rare. Or not rare. I mean, now they're popping up everywhere around the globe. But uh, if I seen a UFO and it landed in front of me, I'd probably my dumb ass would probably walk up to it, knock on the fucking glass, hello, come out, let me in, something, take me with you. Where I can document this and bring it back. I want to see a UFO. I want to see what they're like and what their kinds like. And I definitely want to. I just want to see a UFO. That'd be really cool to get it on video. Right. So you're telling me that you will walk up to the UFO spaceship, let's just say, and knock on the door and say, "Take me with you." Not like that. I'm saying like if it would land, I'd be whoa shocked. Let's pull out the phone. Take me to the leader. <laughs> then, then video. But, you know, since I've been studying around UFOs for a while now, I definitely would like to go closer to it. I mean, even if they did kill me, I would still like to go. Well, you were studying about UFOs. What, what college did you go to? Uh, not college. I'm talking about I just study them. Like, oh. watch a lot of documentaries and stuff and I watch stuff about it and like to get more into that category. Can we get, can we get the show? Can we get Brent? Instead of finding Bigfoot, it's finding UFOs. Yes. I mean, his tall ass, he won't need that much. Uh, his, he could probably reach up and slap one, you know? Well, fuck, I've been with Bigfoot forever, and I still can't catch that motherfucker. Because he ain't real. Let me just he, say that. He is real. Evan even believes in him. I know Evan does. Evan, if you're watching, hi. So uh, let me just say this. Um, uh, I told Britt, like, we were pitching a UFO show uh, for travel. And um, 
And I think it's gonna I think it's gonna work. We just gotta build the cast for it. But yeah, we're gonna try to find some aliens. I, I would say that if I saw a UFO sighting, it would blow my mind. I think I would stop what I have to do and just make sure I document it and and post it and see where it goes. I mean, because my mom said that she's seen a UFO uh, sighting at her job, believe it or not. And she was coming off from work and she saw this red light this kind of hits. And it's up in the sky and it hovered in San Diego, California. And it didn't go anywhere. And they thought it was a plane, but it wasn't moving. It wasn't blinking. And all of a sudden, zoop, it went off. My mom freaked out. She was so she was so stunned. Uh, she ran home and told told us, and we were like, what? "So I mean, I be- when I was a kid, I believed my mom, you know. So I think UFOs are real." <laughs> now, do you think? Do you think when they come down like that, do you think they're here? You know how they 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 zap? They're here for a couple seconds, just floating. Do you think they're here, like getting more insight, and someone someone mm-hmm. is telling them through the air? I, that's a good question. I believe that there's um there's hosts, there's angels, there's sexual beings, there's you know all this above us, right? Are are and you sure they actually help guide us and talk to us to make sure you know we're on the up and up? And I think they're really you know I think they are going through galaxy trying to see what, who's who, where are they at, what's going on. Um, do I think we will uh, start seeing them? Not in our lifetime. Probably not in our lifetime. I so, think. Willie, are you sure? Are you I, sure you? I do know the government has spoken to an alien. Are you sure your mom didn't come in the house like, oh my god, I saw a UFO, just to throw to distract everybody while she froze the rappers away? <laughs> because you know what I'm talking about, listen, the rappers. Oh no! no. <laughs> this was in San Diego, so it's not in in Atlanta, Georgia, buddy. She does that in Atlanta, Georgia, but. You talking about McDonald's? Yeah, we're talking about the McDonald's rappers. Well, I'm sorry. I, yeah, every, now hey, everybody. By the way, everybody out there, uh, Darren, your your wife eats McDonald's. Okay, so let me just let everyone. Next subject. Oh, no, I'm just gonna just keep it real. Look, my dad's a vegan. My mom is trying. She's a she's a struggling vegan. Uh, she's more of a pescatarian. Um. They change their eating um, dietary needs because of health, and they want to live. Uh, my dad loves being a vegan, um, and my mom, she just can't stand it sometimes. She doesn't want to eat rabbit food. She doesn't want to eat yes. lettuce. And, and, you know, she wants a burger. She wants some meat, you know. I get that. That's why I'm not a vegan. But um, And one day we went to McDonald's, and, and uh, the closest McDonald's to my house, which is not even a mile away, I would say, like, not even a half a mile away from my house. And I let me tell you, I never seen oh someone put back two hamburgers. I think they were cheeseburgers or maybe hamburgers, I can't remember. And discard the wrappers underneath her seat. I mean, hell, she's been eating rabbit food for the past ten years. Oh, well, I you know what? That makes sense. You know, when she saw, saw that burger and smelt that meat, she went ahead and devoured it because it's been a minute, you know. And I never, my mom never eats like that. And I looked at her, I'm like, what's wrong with you? What's wrong with you? And she looked at me and was like, boy, shut up. With a, <laughs> with a mouthful of hamburgers. Boy, and she put her wrap, her wrapper in her bag, the burger wrappers in the bag, underneath her seat. I'm like, why are you doing that? And it dawned on me. Well, my dad takes the car. You know, they both have separate cars, but my dad will go in and get something or whatever. And so she hides it underneath her Rousey wasn't Phillips scooting the seat up. Listen. Now, I- in, in, in your dad's defense, I'm not gonna lie. I seen your Thanksgiving when he had that feet and shit looks good, like straight up. I mean, like it looked. Yes. Well, looked let good. me say this: when my dad became a vegan, you know, our, the first Thanksgiving was weird. We didn't know what to do, and we messed up. I mean, well, for him, he only had like two dishes that he could eat from, and so what I started to do first was to make more um, vegan recipes that he could enjoy. So now we, we're cool. You know, it's a culture change. You have to change everything. Yeah, um, yeah. Go hit that. What is it called? Sexy vegan or dirty vegan? That food truck? Slutty vegan. Slutty vegan. Slutty vegan. Yeah. Yeah, we were just there recently. Yeah, slutty vegan is doing good. It's growing. It's a movement. You know, eating healthy and eating right is is something that people want because they want to live. So I'm not mad at it. It's just I kind of hated on it, like vegan yeah. people. Like I don't like it. No, I mean, no. 
No, I don't like it. It's just because I it's something. There's some. There's ones out there. Oh, you kill animals. There's something wrong with that. That's a big no no. Bitch. That's how uh, you do. look. Everyone has opinions. If you have a mouth, you have an opinion. But let me just say this, Brent. When one drunk at night where you went to Stranger Things, who had two two cups of vegan top ramen? No, that's what I was. That's what I was trying to get to. Like. When we went to that event, you know, I was, I was, you know, I was kind of messed up. I was, I was hungry as fuck. Yeah, because so I, I, we got back to the house, and I was like, "What you got to eat?" You said, "Oh, I got these noodles, man. You got to try them." He, he didn't even tell me if they was vegan or not. I put them bitch in. I knocked about two of them cups. Like, Damn, that was good. He's, he's like, like by, he's like, by the way, they vegan. I was like, "Oh hell." <laughs> Please, sir, may I have another? I said, "Another? Sure. Eat healthy. Eat right. That's good. Oh, that's good." Uh, well, I mean, again, UFOs. This podcast has went off the rails. It's with I'm vegan okay. and everything. It's okay. Y'all in for a bumpy ride. Now, here is Brent with Horror News in a Minute. Teen Wolf movie Paramount Plus has spoken up to two hits with debuts. Teen Wolf the movie and Wolfpack, both of which hail from MTV's entertainment studio. Jeff Davis, who's under a multi multi year deal with the studios and MGM, the former a film and revival of the beloved 2007 2011 young adult supernatural series that reunites of a majority of the cast, includes stars Tyler Posey and Tyler Huchelin. Both the streamers record for studios watched the original movie in the first day of its debut. Releases have also won on social media engagement with Teen Wolf the movie, becoming Paramount's plus most success successful social premiere at 4.97 million interactions. HBO orders season two, The Last of Us. This comes as no surprise given the show's massive success, but HBO has officially ordered up the last ordered up The Last of Us Season 2, Bloody Disgusting, is excited to learn this afternoon. We are now two episodes in the debut season of The Last of Us, which premiered with 400 or 4.17 million day one views. The section episodes scared up to 5.7 a day one viewers, all ensuring that a Season 2 order was highly likely from what gathered the first season will adapt. The entirely of the first game while Season 2 will adapt the game's sequel. The Last of Us Season 1 features nine episodes in total, with new episodes airing on HBO Max and streaming on HBO Max on Sunday nights. The finale is scheduled for March 12, 2023. And that is horror news in a minute. Thank you, Brent. That was awesome. Okay. Here is Gerard with his ad read. Now let me just say this: I'm I haven't watched uh, Last of Us yet, but hear great, hey, um, hear great uh, reviews on it. I'm excited to see it, guys. Have you guys seen? Check it out. Yeah, I've already seen it. I'm about to watch the new episode tonight, nine thirty. I know, Brent, you're a bigger gamer than Willie and I. Did you play the game at all? Actually, yes, I've had it. It's actually a PS5 exclusive. You cannot pay it, play it on Xbox. You can only play it on PS4 or PS5. They had a now, if I was you, if any gamers out there, play the first one before you play the second one. But the graphics are really good. The details in the game are just like the show. Like some of the stuff you see in the show, you will see in the game, but not all of it. But it's yeah. really good. I, I know the premise. Like I've seen a couple like Let's Play of it. Like even though I don't game, I do enjoy the cultures of games, especially horror games. I get I get real deep into some stuff. I got I got a little bit for that later. But something I find interesting about this one. Don't quote me on it. It's been a minute. But I believe like these zombies are different. They're based off like mushroom spores or something. Mm -hmm. So they're like mutated. So like uh, my brother was talking to me about it the other day. They're breaking down like so somebody's like quadriplegic or something, mm -hmm. and they find more other quadriplegic. They like morph into a bigger zombie or something because that's what they need to adapt because mushrooms will adapt to survive. Right, and, and I just want to say this is the correct way for an outbreak to happen. 
So the the fiction is, you know, zombie comes and bites you, and then, then yeah. But this is actually the correct way for uh, um, zombies in the breakout to actually work. I mean, my neighbor was telling me when we was watching the show, there's some zombies that have like this moss on their head. Well, when you get bitten by one of their zombies, and they're it, it looks like they're all laying in the, on the ground or whatever, like what your brother was saying, uh, Gerard, uh, that moss or that uh, that mushy moss on the ground, when they get bitten, that attracts them. So they all get up out of their sleep or if they're sleeping or what. They all get up and they chase that one person because that moss or that ground told them to because that they've been bit. See, I find it interesting because I feel like they, this game was very much inspired by that the fungus they have. Uh, fungus, is, yes. There's a real fungus and it grows on like I think I think small frogs and I think certain bug species where they become a zombie. And I also know there is a parasite in the ocean that some fish they'll eat their tongue. And it will live on their tongue and basically control that fish or something along the lines similar. So it's not like a real life zombie like we believe in zombies or what we say, but something to the similar effect that that fish is forced when it eats, it feeds that instead to that host is the devoured. It's a parasite. That's what it is. So, th parasite. so there you go. That's the word I was looking for. There is a, uh, a mushroom zombie. He has like a mushroom head. He's kind of, he's a zombie and... The thing about these zombies, they only hear sound. They go off of sound. They don't go off of uh, seeing you or anything. So you can shine a light right at them, and, and they wouldn't hear you. I mean, they would hear you if you made a sound, but they wouldn't see you at all. So I love them. I think they call them bolters or whatever. They, they'll bolt at you if they hear like any little sound, and they'll jump on you, which is crazy. It's kind of like the game. I like well, that idea. So I'm so I'm just so excited to see this game. Uh, see this. Excuse me. Series heard nothing but good things, and it's just another. Movie to put into my catalog. All right. By the way, Attraction Industry Trade Show. Go register now at FearExpoLive.com. Y'all already know what it is. Fear Expo is back, baby. March 23rd for the 26th in Owensboro, Kentucky. Again, that is March 23rd for the 26th in Owensboro, Kentucky Convention Center. Fear Expo Live is the newest national haunted attraction trade show industry. I reversed that. My bad. Bringing together haunters and vendors, they are dedicated to connecting attraction owners to the latest products and services from the industry leading vendors earlier in the year to ensure products are, are delivered on time and ahead of schedule and at some of the best prices around. For more information, you can go visit FearExpoLive.com. Again, that's FearExpoLive.com. Thank you so much for that awesome ad read. Um, I thought the Holy Spirit. Oh, I wanted to say something before we. Yeah, go ahead. I was gonna say the guy, the main guy in the show in Last of Us, he actually plays the Mandalorian. Y'all didn't know that. I think somebody's reading my scripts. Oh, uh, the TV show? Mm -hmm. I wasn't reading scripts. I was just thought y'all would know <laughs> know about it. Yeah, uh, he he is a uh, he seems like he's blowing up because he got off of Game of Thrones, Mandalorian. Now he's doing the Last of Us, like the. Like, like he's hitting a big show, big show, big show. Boom, boom, boom. TV shows. So he he getting paid, y'all. And let me I wonder. I I want I, it's probably not as big as like some of the superstars like the rock, you know, uh Ryan Reynolds and stuff. But I wonder, is that pay with the royalties over fifteen episodes or whatever? How many episodes a show is especially multiple see? How much that compares to like a big mainstream movie star with the royalties? Because you know. Every time somebody streams it, you know, it's a check. Listen, it's continuous. Listen, I just want to say that, um, like, look at some of these big 
um, Big Bang Theory or um, Friends, those were big TV shows that that paid out over a million dollars per episode to each cast member because of the popularity of the TV show. So uh, I am, but that was on a network, um, a major network. So I don't know. I know that they're gonna be paying, getting paid really well. Not to mention Netflix bought like the rights to Friends when they had it for like a billion dollars or something outrageous. Oh wow! I didn't Something's know crazy. Not, like, not a billion dollars, but it's it's buckles of money. Once you like, they'll you know they'll have a budget where it's like four point five million to produce a movie. They'll get more money out of it. Like I, I was looking up uh, Barbarian. I think their movie cost like four point five million dollars. They got back forty five million dollars, which is really high. And that's a good. That's really good. What's outrageous is that's not even an expensive movie nowadays. And we're talking like oh, that's that's something I love about horror and something that's always been like for anybody who's independent in art. That's something magical about horror. Anybody who's like artist, artistic, and who really has a, an idea, horror is the way to get into. Because that's like some of the, some of the, our, our classic movies in horror were made on a budget. Uh, the original, uh, what is it? Michael Myers, the original Halloween. It was so cheap they cleaned half the house up, and that's where they filmed it. Right? They cleaned half the house up, made it look nice, and they filmed it. And then later on the movie, it got destroyed because that's what happened because, you know, he got older and stuff. And that's where they did it. And the movie was so on such a low budget. The original mask is a Captain Kirk mask spray painted white. It is and it's magical. It's made buckles of money to create a franchise because somebody had the nerves big. Dude, I got 12, 12 grand or whatever what cost used to used to cost to make a movie back then. And they made it happen. And if you're talking in the realm of the movies. Four point five million dollars is chump change. That is the god honest truth. Like, I think Godzilla, the the big Godzilla movie, came out. It was two hundred and fifty million dollars. Am I outrageous for thinking that much? Well, I know you do. Oh, no, the the seventy eight Halloween movie, the first shape of Nick Castle. I think their movie budget was like three hundred thousand dollars. Got back forty seven million. Yeah, yeah, but, and then, uh, but also I just want to say that, but the cost of living was different too. So oh, absolutely. I, that goes into factor, but yes, you're right. Um, I mean, Blumhouse, that was their coin. Paranormal activity. They, they, with paranormal activity, they wanted to do a, a small budget. I remember he said, he said, he told me that um, Blair Witch, he said, Willie, I wanted another Blair Witch project. I wanted another movie that was low in cost and I could try to make it really good to make money on the, uh, on the back end. And, uh, Skin mark or scrim mark. Is it simple? Like literally within the last two weeks, is Skimmery. Skimmery. My bad. I'm bad with names. You know that. But Skimmery is a low budget horror movie. It's made buku some money recently because you can do it well. Oh. You, it's not how. It's not what you do, but it's how you do it. That's right. So if you can take it, uh, don't quote me on this. I could be misquoting myself, but I believe that uh, Paranormal Activity, when it first was created, you know, they did the test screenings and stuff. A bigger producer came and said, hey, you got something here. We're going to add a little more money. And I think like some bigger production company that's a little bigger than Blumhouse came back in and added a little more money on top of it and and finished it to get it that little more oomph that it needed. Yeah. I mean, yes, uh, studio companies can hop on a project, put some money in into it, put the resources into it. They're, they're, they're the specialty to make it better. Yeah. I mean, all you need is to be – all you need to have is a good product and be lucky enough to be in the right situation for that producer. Be like, fuck it, dude. I got 20 grand. I'll put that behind market and we'll get this thing going. You just got to catch fire, you know? Yeah. And you got to run with it. And that's something I love about horror is anybody can do it if they really set their mind to it. It might not be movies, but it could be haunted houses. It could be making masks. It could be something creative. And it's such a fun and vast area. There's horror movies about clowns. Rubber tires, dolls, whatever you can do creatively, make it scary. If you do it right, it's going to be scary. Yeah, and 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 let me just say this: horror was like the last genre to like cross mainstream. I mean, most of these uh, horror and zombie movies they were independent. They didn't really get distribution. They had to hustle just to get notoriety. Um, and yeah, man, like you know, you we can learn from the past productions. Of how to um, be under be under budget, but I mean, there's some good producers out there. I know some of them that can uh, save a million here and there. Um, yeah. I've 
listen, I'm kind of still salty that I lost versus, but I just want to say congratulations to Brent uh, Gerard for uh, um, killing it. Two and, and oh, two and oh. Two and Two and oh no, you only got one win, Gerard. We know that. Yeah. We all know Predator beat Jeepers. We all know it. Okay, okay. look, look. Can I say something? No, this is no. No, no, it's, it's old news. No, no, no. I'm trying. No, I'm giving. I'm listen. Just listen. Okay. Well, I was telling Willie the other day. I was like, you know, should I not go there with it? No. No. But well, it's one. One Brent, one Gerard. Um. But I'm I'm curious to know who's gonna what's the next pick and who's gonna be in versus. I'm well, telling you, bloody Valentine's. We we it's perfect. We have Valentine's coming up. We should just executive like vote on it right now. Can right. we do one every like week? Like we do this one, then we do the next one. Versus and one every month. Yeah, damn. We need to get a quicker than that. It's once every month. No, we will run. I there is there is plenty. Of things to do, but I really want us to do it right. You know, if we take, if we know two or three weeks in advance, hey, uh, Freddie versus Jason, uh, and I've got Freddie, I'm going to make sure I come prepared and I'm going to have two weeks because I don't have time. If it's every week, I don't have time to watch 12 damn Freddie, Jason movies. Weeks. You know, when I did, when I did the Predator, I watched every single Predator movie because I had two or three weeks. I watched them all. Right. And also, because I'm super passionate about the Predator. And to piggyback off of you, Gerard, look, we all been in the ring. Uh, Kat hasn't yet. Hopefully, she she will be chosen. Uh, we could she will be picked today. But you have to prepare. You have to know your stuff. You have to do your research, or you're not gonna win. Yeah. You want to be Kat? saying it like that, guys? I was saying it just if we would do it in two weeks at a time. You know, it would. Oh yeah, we know what's going. Okay, so let's do this. Let's let's um, do verses and let's figure out what we're going to. Well, we know the topic. It will be. Uh, let's see, bloody Valentine and Texas Chainsaw. This is going to be a good one. I better get it. Let's right. pick the battle. The ones that are going to battle. Okay, Ooh. that's going to battle. All right, so I'm going to share my tab here. Now, can we do something? If say if it picks me or Cat Gerard, and I'm leather, or if I'm bloody Valentine, bloody Valentine, can I switch to Leatherface if we do a rock paper scissors? Or something? That is up to you and the person that's battling. But yeah, I mean, I don't think I don't I, I don't see it. it's a problem. Okay, so here we go. Can you guys see my uh, screen here? Yes. Yeah, you, you got to pull it up. Woo -hoo! All right. So you guys ready, Cat? Scaredy Cat Cat, make some noise. Are you watching? Because uh, you may be chosen. I don't know. This is It's not rigged or anything. This is all, you know. But I want you to see it because I don't want you to say, ah, oh, it's rigged and y'all picked me. All right, here we go. Pull the screen down just a little bit before you push it. What'd you say? Like, try to stretch it out a little bit more where we can see the full uh, oh, uh, spill. Will. Does that work? Okay, well, that's fine. You can do it however. No. Nope. Let's spin the wheel. All right, we're gonna spin the spin the wheel. Let's do it. All right, guys. So this is going for uh. <laughs> no whammy, no whammy, no whammy, no whammy. Let's, go, let's see. God damn it! Uh, God damn it! Uh, oh my God! Congratulations, Gerard. Uh, Dang, you are good. You getting worked. I better get three and zero. I'm just gonna call it now. Three and zero. You getting worked on versus? Look. You know what? This is my punishment for taking like a year off and not watching horror cannot, movies. Cannot, You're making. Hold on. You cannot claim three and zero when you didn't officially win three and zero. Because I'm that good. Oh my god! All right. Kobe calls his shots. The next one it is. is <gasps> oh, that! Yeah. Oh my God, Scaredy Cat Cat! Listen, listen, Scaredy Cat Cat. I just want to say, welcome back. You are in the hot seat now of the debates. This is great. I'm excited. Sorry, you know, 
You didn't. Ladies have to choose. I'll let her choose her character. Oh, look at you. I'm uh, a gentleman. Sorry, Brent. Uh, I know you wanted to get into this this one uh, because your favorite character, Texas Chainsaw. Yeah, but I'm gonna say this. I don't care if I think someone else when I'm choosing Leatherface. Bias. Bias. He would Bias. never. He could never do jury duty. Nope. Bias. Very. No, nah, nah, I ain't gonna do that. I'm gonna be fair, but let's, we'll just, we already know who's gonna win that battle. But I'm so excited, and just as you guys know, versus is when we take the horror villains and we compare them to another horror villain that has similar traits, maybe um, chills, whatever. And then each host gets to pick one and, and battle which one is the, is the best. I think that spin wheel was rigged. I'm nope. excited, actually. Not, not, I've never seen My Bloody Valentines. I have not either. I have never seen it. I, I'm excited. So now I get it. I've been wanting to rewatch a series of horror movies. I was, I was considering like doing the, the Nightmare on Elm Street or the Friday 13th series. And, but you know what? This is going to be a great excuse to rewatch the Texas Chainsaw ones. Mm -hmm. I probably won't watch all of them, but I'm going to try to get the good basic one and 100% the one with Gunny R. Lee, rest in peace. And then also watch the Bloody Valentines because I have yet to see that one. So this is this is perfect. I'm excited actually now. I might watch yeah, one. If you are going to watch Leatherface, watch the original 74. I know you could do that already, but oh, watch yeah. the 2003 remake with uh, Andrew Bernarski. Really good. Andrew Bernarski. Is he who plays it, uh, the Leatherface in that yes, one? Yes, he plays in the 2003 remake. And there's, an, there's the beginning in the 2003 and another one. So really good. There's like 50 of them. Wait, wait. Here's the question. Which ones do I skip? Okay. Uh, now, I'm not a big. I didn't. I didn't. To me, I didn't like uh, Texas Chainsaw Massacre 2. Uh, but it does give you a lot more detail if you watch that movie. Uh, 74 is your best bet. Stay with that. Stay with the 2003 remake. Stay with the. Mm -hmm. uh, it says the beginning, and the newest one. It just came out in 2022. I would stay yeah. with that one. But watch out for that. One. Watch out for the one that has the kid in it with a cow head. Don't watch that one. That one was terrible. And the 2013. Watch it. Okay. Yeah, I heard it. I seen the 2013 one. You, I forgot it. I, I couldn't even tell you what the heck happened in that movie. I can remember watching. I think I just got bored with that one. Uh, but how many Bloody Valentines? Is there? I know there's a, I know there's one. There's two? There's one. Is, I thought they what? did a remake. I thought they came out like the 70s, and then they did a remake years ago. I'll look it up for you guys. Yeah, look it up. And let us know. I thought it was one, but it may be. I think it's two. Okay. I, I really feel like it. Facts check that. But yeah. Um, there are. Is Valentine's Day, and that means a whole lot of horror fans are going to be what going to watch both the 1981 classic Mister Bloody Valentine. So there's two. And it's 2009 remake, My Bloody Valentine 3D. I know you know why I knew there was a remake. I can remember 2009. I was nine years old. I was nine years old when this movie came out, and uh, my mother came back from the movie theater because uh, she went. My dad. She came back uh, embarrassed, like she was hiding her head, her head in her hoodie or whatever. She uh, had a bucket of popcorn and she got scared. I've heard the story. I, I didn't get to see it, and she threw the entire bucket of popcorn nice. over the theater. Bad enough, she had to get up. The whole like front row had like the row in front of them had to get up and like move out the way because they're soaked in butter and salt. Damn. Hey, it was like that. It was like it was bad, and we so heard it man. everywhere. I literally was like, "Whose popcorn is this?" Like, I did y'all ever uh, throw nickels at people in the pop in the movie theater? No. Why would we? No. Do <laughs> okay, never mind. You know when the movie's playing and you know you and your buddies are just having a good time. You watching the movie and you just throw popcorn to somebody. If I'm in a movie theater with just my, like just my crew, like the people I'm going with, or if I'm going with some, yeah, I mean I'll, I'll have fun in the movie theater. If especially if I, I'm by myself, but, or with my group of people, yeah, I do some weird things. But you know, I mean, not with a bunch of people. Do it to yourself or to your people, but don't do it to other strangers that's there. You know what I mean? No, yet, that's not. Yet that scary does not condone throwing nickels in a movie theater. Not nickels. I'm talking about this one time. My buddy was on the far end, and I felt the nickel hit me. I picked it up, and I looked around. I asked anybody to throw it. I threw it back, and it hit somebody. 
crazy. See, but I, if you moved yet, the popcorn people was fun. Where where I was at, uh, where I was living in California, yeah, people cut up all the time. But like people take it as a def- uh, like like rude being, you know, they take offense to it because they spend their hard hard money to chill, and you got people on their phones and throwing popcorn and all that stuff. People just want to chillax. But um, you know, Good I try stuff. to respect, respect everybody in their space. Now, let me ask you guys this. I, are you all excited for have the drive through again? And especially when they do those old school horror movies at the drive ins? So, uh, yeah. I, this summer? That's, I, I love that you say that, Gerard, because that's, I mean, they're coming back. They're coming back in full swing. And they're mm-hmm. trying to be with it, you know? And I think it's cool. I like it, you know? Um, we, especially out here in the South, like during October. Like the first two or three weekends in October, you can get away with it. Maybe the fourth if you're lucky. It just depends. The South, especially here in Tennessee, you could leave. It's 70 degrees the first day. The second day, it's snowing. And then after that, it's 80 the next. So you got you to gotta watch it. But a lot of these, like uh, uh, a couple of the ones around us, we're doing drive-ins, doing a horror movie. Let it be a classic one of the new ones that are out at the time. And then a little haunted house at the end. Like you go for a haunted house. Now let me just say this: When I enjoyed a drive-in experience, a, uh, what the heck? It was. Uh, That's my dog, guys. I'm sorry. It was in California, and we didn't have that cool, that that cool stuff that you had that you said, Gerard, with the haunted house. That's when I think these these drive-ins are being more creative and inventive to make sure that people are coming back to their space. I think it's awesome. You know, in California, we had no, we, we didn't have, you know, rain clouds. So it was a cool to go to one during the summertime and and to sit there and enjoy a good movie or two. That's life. I I miss it. Uh, some of them closed down. But since I've been in Tennessee with you, I've been seeing some more popping up. And I just, I'm excited for that. I've never actually been to a drive-in. What? Yeah. Really? I've never, I've never... You ain't got them in South Carolina? I doubt it. The only one I've seen is like when they're watching the movie and it's at a haunt, I think. And like, I think it's the LA Hayride, I think, when they have a, they'll have a uh, drive in movie theater and they'll have these scare actors come out and scare you with stilts on and shit. Yeah. I love that idea. So, did, how, yeah, they, they did do that one. And they say, keep your windows down too. <laughs> yeah. They, they did that during COVID and it was so smart that they did that. It was really cool. Can yeah. we, can we talk about, because we're kind of at the tail end of it, the aftermath. How ingenious the haunt industry got when it came to COVID. And all the hoops and everything we had to jump through. They got very smart. I mean, we had drive through haunted houses. We had uh, we had uh, social distancing haunted houses. Haunted houses changed the game so much. They got rid of uh, a scare act. You know, you make the sounds. They went to sound boards. You press the button and they had sounds. We had... Um, I know, like, in certain scare zones with Six Flags, they had, like, fences. It almost became, like, a zoo of scary, right? And then they relied on animatronics, air horns, air cannons to make the scares physical. So we had to come around. And that's just something that proves with the, the horror industry, with the movies. Let it be low budget. Let it be haunted houses trying to open up. Let it be whatever we – we'll find ways around it, and we'll find it for the cheapest way down. Straight. I love how the uh, scare actors, you know – when, when it was during COVID, I love how some of the scare actors would put masks, like COVID vaccine masks, like nurse masks over their actual mask and like paint it like a scary face to match theirs. <coughs> Pretty cool idea. So shout out to uh, Terry Spencer, who is the Haunted House Association um, president uh, this term. Um, and he owns a fear factor in Utah, Haunted House. But like him and, and myself, we uh, created a COVID-19 uh, contingency plan. Mine's just more of a short, short version, but I was, you know, in in when COVID nineteen was happening, you see a lot of jobs, a lot of things was was a lot of uncertainty was happening in our world, right? And the entertainment industry was affected. All the industries was affected, right? But the entertainment industry was affected the most. And when people are producing events and putting money up, and then to see that the project and and things just gotta sit, um, it and not make this money back, it's it's it's, it's hurtful for for that. But in the time of crises, um, we, our, our industry did the best that we could, and all the industries did. And um, I remember Spencer Terry um, brought this his little pamphlet out that the lawyers kind of you know co-signed with them on, 
and he was teaching it. And then I was teaching the state of Georgia, the entertainment industry, about what, what I had to get back going, which um, which the governor over here had that. So I was just I'm I was just excited just to be a part of something that to help curve us during the uncertainty. Um also it was cool to like see people being con like just aware of hey six feet and clean up uh, because we need to you know we need to be clean as a human race. Absolutely. People aren't washing their hands, especially when using the bathroom in a public space. But also uh what was cool is that we could um be inventful and to create some amazing stuff. So when COVID happened, we took down all the drapes, all the all like the drape, anything that can have COVID, um, that virus um, attach itself to, had to be removed from all the yeah non hard surface that could be disinfected. We 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 switched from uh, Lysol to Microban because Microban added a surface. You know something I got to applaud Willie on. You know I was working with him during this. We lost sleep. I know me and him, we both lost sleep trying to figure out a way to get this stuff together. And one day I can remember we're sitting here, we're just like, what the fuck? And I get a phone call from a sleep deprived. Well, he's like, all right, I got it. Here's what we're going to do. And it was like a crackhead energy. I'm like, it's 3 a.m. He's like, no, we got it. it was like, and and we he, we just went on a tangent. Next thing I know, it's like 6 a.m. Like, this is fantastic. I got to get to work now. I can yeah. remember because we stayed up all night. I had to get to work at 7 a.m. It was yeah, it was crazy because at that one point in time, you know, I called my school, which you know, I was at, I was a, a student at the time, and I was like, "Yo, what do we do?" And they're like, "Just do your homework just, and shut up." And so, in the hot industry, it, you know, it's a wild, wild west. So, because it's a wild, wild west, we no one's not really spearheading anything. The, you know, uh, trans world canceled. You know, they they couldn't they couldn't uh, adjust in time. At, Thank you know, God for your expo pivot. Thank God for Fear expo for pivoting on this one, but. Um, you know, with my family being, you know, my mom is, is a nurse, and mm -hmm. so she did her research on it. Um, also, just having my ear to the ground, and then also figuring out how can these these inter entertainment sectors uh, protect themselves to reopen. And so that's what I did: is I sat there and instead of doing my homework, I sat there and put up a COVID uh, uh, contingency 19, COVID nineteen contingency plan. Uh, say that three times. Um, and I shared it, and I shared it with the, the state of Georgia and some hot owners up, you know, north in South Carolina, and um, and then to see that Terry, Spencer Terry, and I kind of like both did it when we were on the phone together, and to see that we were like trying to help, you know, our fellow uh, industry, it was exciting because on that phone call, I was like, "What do we do?" You know, and I was talking to him, and he's like, "Hey, I did this," and, I, and I'm like, "Oh, I did this," and then what was really cool was that the um, these uh, haunt shows started to gravitate to us and have a mm -hmm. speak about how to reopen um, their haunts during COVID-19. And it was really cool. And I, I felt really blessed just to be a part of it. Yeah. You came up with the uh, the come together, scare together type ordeal. Cause it was, I think uh, the original thing was households. Right. And, you know, and it was like, they're at Denny's or something before right. and they're in a car. Right. It doesn't make sense for a household to go to a haunted house together it makes sense if they come together because if they're in a car, which is close uh, proximity, I can't even talk, but close um, in um, range of each other, they can cough and that virus moves on to, to the next person mm -hmm. in the car. So it's not, it's not a household. It's really when they come together as a group, they stay together as a group. And, and something for me, you know, I'm in the medical field and so I'm going to say this. Look, COVID is non-symptomatic now. That means there's no symptoms. You won't know if you have it. And 90%, first off, I'm not a lawyer. This is not real statistics. This is my personal opinion. Most people won't be affected. You will have COVID and you won't even know it. A lot of people, I've seen it. You won't know. Who it is dangerous to is the elderly and the elderly and also people with respiratory issues, right? Mm -hmm. If you know that I got a pot of hands. I put it on before the show. I've been in my room. My place is sanitized. Just wash your hands. And that's something you got to be thankful for with COVID. And I think we all came together. Is hopefully if we, hopefully people learn their mistakes, we all continue to keep up. Wash our hands. <coughs> Make a goal. If you don't wash your hands a couple times a day, it doesn't take, it takes 10 seconds. Even right. if you just do a little quick little rinse, you're good. That's so much better than not. Just be courteous. Wash your hands. And if not for yourself, I don't care if you don't wear a mask. I don't care whatever your opinion is. Do it for somebody's grandma, grandpa, or somebody who their kid has asthma. 
those are the people who can be affected. And I've seen it firsthand. We've had people die yes. from COVID. Yes. I know people who've passed away from COVID. I've been to the funerals. It's not fun. Be smart and just wash it. It's all you have to do. I don't. You don't have to wear the mask, in my opinion, but wash your hands and be conscious of for other people. Yeah, it, speaking it, of that, today's sponsor, wash your hands. Well, well, the thing is, you you, you do you got to wash your hands. But you know that that when you were saying that, Jar, it brought me back to when we, uh, you know, we gathered for an uh, unfortunate event, a uh, funeral, um, and uh, someone had uh, COVID in that gathering, and um, I freaked out. I was like, "Oh, I think I got COVID," and then uh, Lori, Lori was like, "Will, I was watching you." You put on so many coats of uh, hand sanitizer. I think you rubbed it on your face, and I was like, and I had to think, and it was, you know, you had yes, I did, and and it's just it's this habit that I got to go and, and, but because I didn't know anyone, I literally circled around the funeral home, putting <laughs> hand sanitizer on my hands and on my face. I pretty much washed, I bathed in it, and um, I didn't get it. So. And on two things on that, just to show how small and how quickly it can happen. The person who showed up and that story he just told, who showed up with COVID, ended up killing a family member due to spreading COVID to somebody who can be affected. That is a true story. We had two funerals for two weeks. Yeah. Was that was a terrible time. And woman, another thing, hand sanitizer will work up to three times. After the third time, it becomes less effective. Wash your hands. After three times, wash your hands. I'm not a medical professional. Do not take legal advice from me. But you're in the field and, uh, and you have to do it. You know, so that's a good practice. To, to I lost my taste the other day. I'm yeah, cold. I couldn't believe. You know what? I cannot believe it because when when Brent said that, I was like, "Yo, go take a test. Go, there's plenty of tests out there. You know, the government gave us some tests. Go take a test and uh, see that what's just up." Weird though. It, it felt like. like it's, I mean, just, you, it's a weird feeling, you know. Like you eat your pet food. I was eating some macaroni. I'm like, damn, I did not taste it. Shit. And I drank some. You just didn't season it. Some water, and I'm like, could be it. I know water. I was drinking the powder waters. And I, I was like, I think really accusing not. me of over seasoning. You drinking milk? You do over. You got a heavy hand, man. Like, come on now. Hey, at I, least it's not the opposite. Sometimes when I eat your food, I'll be choking. I'm like, oh, it's too salty. No, I'm drinking a, a cup of coffee with some wild turkey 101. Damn, you're going serious, aren't you? <laughs> he got he got work, so he's. I guess. No, he, I'm not drinking. I have work later. I guess you need to med um, medicate. Now, I actually, my throat, it, I put a little in there just to nip my throat. My throat's still messed up. I had the flu last week. As you'll notice, I didn't, if anybody knows, I kept pausing, coughing. That was horrendous. I had strep throat, the flu, and then I, I developed uh, bronchitis. All within a, like, it was absolutely horrendous. I had 102 to 103 fever straight for three days. It was outrageous. I about went to the hospital. God, it was terrible. I'm sorry you had to go through that, but I'm glad to see that you are getting well and you're back, you know, at the swing of things. So. I don't mind it. You know, I'd rather have the flu and have my ant antibodies build up. But yeah. get vaccinated. People need to get vaccinated safe and whatever. Yeah. I, you know, I, 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 I don't know. I, about vaccination. I, didn't, I didn't get vaccinated. And, I, and you know me. You've been with me during that whole, um, you know, period of time. I haven't re I gotten COVID. Knock on wood. I haven't. I, I haven't experience that there, um, i guarantee you willie you've had covid you just did not know my mom said the same thing because before covid i was definitely sick i was i was going through but you know i think they said with people with certain blood types they can't get covid i don't know i think i have that blood type What's they don't even know uh, I, I worked i worked directly in the covid war like the individuals on respirators and stuff like i've like, heard that saying like, before the blood type like Hey, and then did you hear when they said, stay in and have sex? You can't get it. I was like, okay, with who? My hands? Okay. Hey, hey, hey that's how I got a nephew. <laughs> <laughs> For real. Topic. Yes, it is. What's it's, up? It's something, you know, I, I'm a, you know, I'm not in the politics or nothing, but I'm a, I'm a Trump supporter, okay? Everybody out there, I'm not trying to, you know, call, stir up anything. Choose what I choose. But anyway, Trump said, he said some of the dumbest, one of the dumbest shit I've ever heard. And by the president, I swear, he said to cure the vaccine and not to get it 
everybody go and drink bleach. It helps. It works. I'm like, what the hell? Trump just say go. Everybody go drink bleach. Yeah, um, that was that was stupid. Um, because you don't want to drink bleach because you get sick. I was like, I damn, that. he's our president of the United States, and he's saying go fucking drink bleach. I think that was taken out of context, and it was like one of those days, like we're trying to figure out the cure. Maybe drink bleach. I don't know. I was unaware of that situation, but I don't think a president told the population to drink bleach. I don't believe he that. Said it, it by God on the com. Well, I don't know about. That. Well, all I know is, you know, at that time, people were trying to figure it out, and there's a lot of uncertainty. I'm about, I'm about trusting the man. So, all right, I'm going to drink bleach. Sometimes you got to do your research yourself. Even though when people say something, you got to just, you know, do your own research. But Common sense is authorized. Yep, common sense is authorized. He is the president, though. You don't want to drink bleach. But it's so funny. I was watching this TV show. I forget what it what, what it was called, but they, they were doing that. They were talking about COVID. It was... It was um, Dang it, I forget the uh, name of the show, but it, it was about these uh, two, um, or a few, three, I would say, um, jail prisoners that got out of prison or jail <gasps> during, during COVID. And that life, just navigating through that lifestyle during COVID was, was weird because when you come out of prison, you don't have everything, things change, you know, when you're in there for over a certain amount of time. And so it was, it's, it's a good TV show series. I watched the whole thing, like, is it over? Like, it's, is the show it's is on it Prime. ended? It's, yeah, it's on Prime Video. You can still watch it. I'm, I'm, I gotta think of the name. If you guys uh, think of the name, put it in our comments. But yeah, it's funny. It's hilarious. I, I, I enjoyed it. It was really cool. Great concept. Um, that's, what, that's what we need to come up with. Excuse me, but we need to come up with a list of, of TV shows, horror TV shows for people to get into. I'm kind. Of, I know you ain't talking about a horror TV show, but I'm, I think that would be nice. You know, horror-driven TV shows. I swear to God, do not say supernatural. Ain't nobody got fucking time to watch fucking sixteen seasons of forty episodes of Peach, twenty minute. Here's the parameters for a good show. I'm anytime, five. five to six seasons, ten to twelve episodes, forty minutes of Peach. If your show does anything past that, you lose my attention. If you can't tell a good story in that amount of time, forget about it. Animated cartoons do not count, though. A lot of people would disagree. <laughs> Disagree with you and clown you what you just said. Animated cartoons, what are you talking about? Like Family Guy, Simpsons, and stuff like that. I love that. That's my guilty pleasure. I will watch 30 seasons. Do you, now, do you watch Harry Potter? Yeah. Oh, hell. Harry Potter is a story driven show. Like, I mean, in a their story driven story movie series. So, their storyline so messed up. And, no, no. First off, Harry Potter is a movie series, it's not a TV show. Oh, I'm talking series. entertainment. Entertainment-wise, if you can't tell a good story within five to six seasons, it's not worth it, in my opinion. There's too much TV, you know. What? What? You know, uh, I think Willie. You know, I was head, ahead of you in Supernatural for a while, and you said this, this, this ain't no good. You said it's not good, like it don't add up right. And I think he was in the like fifth season, and it wasn't that good. But once you got to Brown six or seven, it gets really good, and it starts getting. Yeah, good. I mean. Look, with technology being so advanced, you know, graphics changed when it first came out. You know, uh, the storytelling, I mean, it was kind of weird in the beginning, but that's normal when you're doing a, a, a TV show or a series. You know, you got to find your grounding. When we did our show, you know, we're trying to find our grounding too. But um, um, but it gets better over time. But because there's so many ser uh, episodes, I was like, dude, when is it going to get better? And I finally am at that season where it's getting better and I'm enjoying it. Yeah. Somebody, so I will watch Supernatural at first. I think I got to like season seven or eight or something like that, and I, I couldn't do it. If somebody will come up with a list of the abridged version, which is all the episodes I say I need to watch that's just storyline, I will enjoy that. If you want a shorter series, in my opinion, it has a couple too many episodes, in my opinion, because it has 20 episodes per season, except for the last two, I believe. Grim is a good show. I enjoyed it heavily. And it's got some horror aspects. It's about the Brothers Grimm's whole, uh, books. Yeah, fairy tales. Well, I wouldn't just... say I wouldn't say this is horror, but I would say this show is a scary lifetime. Bahala Vikings. You're into that? I haven't heard of that one. No, I haven't either. Well, I heard it from you, Britt, but um, mm, yeah, but it's horror. Yeah, I mean. It's a scary lifetime. They're fighting. They're Vikings going against Mercia, all the 
the king of England. They're they're doing it's raids. Crazy. I mean, that's a scary lifetime. You can risk your life. I think that's scary. I mean, that's you, medieval times, it's like Game of Thrones, right? But by kind of. You know what we need by King Wise and that can fit in the horror aspect? Gale del Tomoro. He's got to be the one to do it. Mm -hmm. Get into the God of War Nordics. I've never even played the game, but I love the idea of God of War when he went Nordic. That has so much potential with all the beasts and the creatures, and you could add a horror twist to it, some scares. Forget about it. That is perfect. Right, exactly. HBO, get on that. You made another successful PlayStation. The deal's already there. But you got to get Gael de Mordo because he can do monsters. Yes, he can. And Good he folklore guy. All right. So I'm going to. Uh oh. Let me go back. All right, Britt. Your turn. All right. Let's do it. Let me uh, go ahead. Looking to be a part of a community while getting dished out. Halloween horror and haunt industry happening. Well, you're in luck. We're on the street is that Yep That Scary now has a Patreon accepting like-minded individuals to engage, participate, and have a little fun within our new horror family. Get exclusive content, merch, and messages from the cast. Be invited to some exclusive member-only events and notable horror events. Sign up and become a Patreon member today. <clears throat> yeah! Thank you, so Thank you so much for that, Brent. Um... It's so funny because when we were talking and you guys, we kind of like you know, kind of drifted off into these different topics. You guys are giving me time to finish some slides that are coming soon. So thank you for stalling. Great job, guys. Um, but now the, the, the file's too big. Um, I can get for Gab all day long. StreamYard is saying it's too big. And I'm like, what the heck? So That's what she said. Um, so we're going to so we're gonna keep going with Ticket it or Skip It. Here we go. All right. Take it or skip it, stream it or miss it. Alright, it's time for Take It or Skip It. This is an exciting part where we give you a couple of choices of movies or other TV shows to watch. Now, here you go. 65. From Sam Raimi, the writer, director, and creator of The Evil Dead, comes 65, the new horror movie. Hopefully going to be a subgenre, in my opinion, with dinosaur horrors. Instead of slashers, we have dinosaurs. This exciting, this exciting new picture has the potential of becoming a new dinosaur horror movie. I'm feeling due to the success of the recent Jurassic Worlds, directed by, uh, directed with, directed with some horror themes in, involved into it. I believe this could be a new subgenre. Let's take a look at 65. Run. <laughs> My name is Mills. I was the pilot of the ship. We've crash landed on an uncharted planet. We are the only survivors. I don't know where we are, but there's something out there. Something alien. We must get to an escape vessel. Escape pods. Location unknown. We need to be quiet. Quiet. And move. I need to get us home. Oh, Ready? Run! <laughs> Now, 
I'm excited for this movie. And like I said in my earlier script, I need to stop t trying to edit it right before the show because I always mess that up. And I apologize. That's all me, guys. I'm going to try to do better in the future with my reads. Now, here's what I'm going to say. I'm excited about this because I feel like Jurassic World opened up potential being directed by, I forgot his name, but he's the individual who came up, I believe it was, he did remake a grudge. He did some horror aspects with the recent Jurassic World. And I love the idea of horror movie, dinosaur movies, like the classic Carnosaurus, if y'all familiar with that one, I believe that's a 1970s or 1980s movie. I love the idea of this. But I got to know, Brent, what do you think about this? This is a, this looks like a very exciting movie because it kind of reminds me of kind of a little bit of Predator in a way. I don't know, kind of like an alien vibe because I don't know if you've seen in the trailer some of them weapons he has. It's kind of like a time ticketing bomb like Predator uses, and also it's kind of like Jurassic World. So this is definitely a ticket for me. I appreciate. It. Wait, what do you think? Wow, this is a ticket for me. Um, again, I was trying to figure out like what time. Uh, frame are they in like you know is it future because of the weapons that um, Brent mentioned but yes this is intriguing and to see a different uh, take on these uh, prehistoric animals yes let's go I am down for it awesome I think what you're saying if you notice it said uh, humans discovered the earth what if this is like they accidentally do time travel they came back and this is how the human population starts if it has that potential because they have all these futuristic things. If we had to keep evolving, we have the basics for guns, grenades, and warfare, which is what how the human population evolved. This is exciting. I think this is going to be... the guy that plays in that, I don't know if y'all know, but he actually uh, plays in Star Wars. Uh, he is Kylo Ren, I think, kind of on the Darth Vader side. Of course, not a big... Correct me if I'm wrong, I'm not a big Star Wars guy, so... I don't know. Yeah, I, be, I do believe he is. Uh, that is also him. So this is a ticket for me, so I'm happy we all got a ticket on this one. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, no. Let's see what we got next. Viking Wolf. February 3rd on Netflix. As I said before, I wanted to start dipping our toes in the water of the European horror movies. So here's our first selection in the magical world known as Europe. And yes, boys and girls... You're going to have to read the subtitles for this. Now let's dive on in to The Viking Wolf. So what was it? I don't know. Jag vet inte vad du tror att du håller på med här. En ung flicka är dräpt. Och du kommer hit och pratar om varulvar och vandrar historier. Varulven ni har gående lös här i Nybo, det är ingen vandrahistorie. Was multitasking. I missed that whole trailer. Okay. And you can't listen to it. You got to read it. Yeah, I'm pretty bummed. Dang it. <sighs> wow. Out of all the ones to like multitask to, the one you couldn't understand was. <laughs> I know. I was just trying to get the next segment ready, and uh, yeah, it sounds good. It sounded good. It's, it's a it's a German it's a German uh, werewolf movie, okay. and it's about and. The, let me give a quick little rundown. In case we have any audio listeners, this is a new German uh, werewolf movie 
with the idea of a plague coming back. And the plague is the werewolf disease in a small town in Germany. I like the idea of it. Brent, give me your opinion. Now, this movie, it seems like the wolf is like a beast of a wolf. Like, he's like huge, massive. He's like the main villain. I mean, it's about a wolf, you know. But yeah, also... But also me, you know, I actually put subtitles on in a lot of my shows, but usually I like to have subtitles on when it's like they're in English still, you know. I would like for their act, them to actually talk in English, but uh, I will give it a shot. So I'm definitely going to stream this one and take it this one for sure. Perfect. Willie, what about you? Oh, from what it sounds, it sounds pretty cool. So, um, you know. I'm I'm gonna see it. I mean, look, I'm just gonna say this: out of out of all the movies that have creatures and animals in it that were failed in my eyes, that you have suggested, uh, Gerard, this one has potential. You know, the shark, the shark one, you know, <laughs> shark NATO, shark killer, the creature in the snow. Like, I mean, I'm like, I don't even know where you finding these movies from. But like this one is this this one is 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 exciting to watch. I'm I'm gonna take this one. 100%. Yeah. Well, I'm glad I'm catching your guys off guard with some movies. Hopefully, you haven't seen because it's kind of hard. I'm not gonna lie to sometimes find a movie that is not like mainstream because we can all find Scream. We can all find The Evil Dead coming out. I want to give y'all some options and find some maybe you're not expecting. You know, obviously we're gonna do the big main ones as well to give our opinions, see if we're gonna see it or not. But I think it's fun to also find these. Obscure ones, especially during the time of the off season for horror, really, I think, in my opinion. Okay. But uh, I'm not sure if this is going to be a ticket for me due to the fact that I have a very bad attention span to read subtitles, in my opinion. So this is going to have to be a skip it for me. We know. <laughs> we know. I was going to say that, too, but, you know, I'm, I'm going to give that a chance. So. We all know what the third one is. The Last of Us, out on HBO Max right now. From the smash hit video game The Last of Us comes the new HBO original The Last of Us, starring Pedro Pascal, I butchered that name, known for his roles in Game of Thrones and the hit at Disney Plus Mandalorian. And, and starring Bella Ramsey, he's also a star from the Game of Thrones. They're probably pulling them from Game of Thrones for this. And yes, this show did come out two weeks ago, but it's my segment, so fuck it. I'm early for episode three, so let's take a close look at the Last of Us. Why are you so important? If you've come this far, then you know what's out there. Keep going for family. I'm not family. No. Cargo. You're not going to scare us. Scared him. You have a greater purpose than any of us could have ever imagined. Be careful who you put your faith in. Everybody I have cared for has either died or left me. Do you trust me? The last of us. Yes. We already know that answer for me. I think we kind of did this segment earlier. Yeah, basically. we thought about this way earlier. I mean, so, Brent, is this a ticket or skip? Uh, is this a stream it or miss it for you? Oh, uh, you know, Gerard, I got to think about this one. No, nah, this is a stream it for me. I, I've done seen. I, I was going to say, you thought. First two. I've just seen the first two episodes of watching it now. I recommend y'all should watch it now. Actually, start from the first episode. So, yeah. would that spoil it? Is it? Is it? Is it? Is it like? Are you like nipping at the teeth for the next episode? That's why I need to know. Stranger Things. Yes, I, I'm. I'm ready for the next episode. I wouldn't Perfect. say it's on Stranger Things level, but it's getting there. It's moving right. forward. Like every episode. Every so, not this is no spoilers, but every episode is gonna talk about how the pandemic started. It will show like a little, like a couple minutes of it. Now, I just want to say, like, um, 
I'm just excited for this one. I, I can't wait to watch it. I'm gonna I'm gonna hold my thoughts um, on it. But listen, for them to put out two episodes already and for it to get a uh, season two, that sh- that shows that it has it's on track for some success. Third episode tonight. Third ep- episode tonight. Yeah. How many how many episodes in this first season do we know? I'm gonna say about six at least. Yeah, it said it's gonna the final the finale is gonna be done in what March? So yeah. Oh this wow. Should be, it should be twelve. So well, I was thinking six. So uh, so it's going to end in March. Okay, so it's like once a week episodes, right? How long yeah. are the episodes? Uh, I'm gonna say they're about forty five to fifty minutes. Okay, so probably the last, probably episode six is gonna be an hour and a half. I think this is gonna have to be streaming for me, but I'm gonna wait till March because I'm one of those people. If I really get into it, I want to watch all of them in a row. You want to binge watch? I want to binge. I want me another binge show. Like I. I'm, I can't. I did can't wait. Finish, uh, did you finish Sopranos? Uh, we, oh no, you did not. No, 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 no. First off, let me explain myself. I I love the Sopranos, but I know how the series ends. I'm on literally on the last episode, and I don't want to watch it because I know how it ends. Because it's gonna piss me off. What am I gonna fade to black? Like, I know how the show ends. I love the guys. Sopranos. I'm catching up now. I've started watching Wednesday again. Okay, or not again, for, like getting into it. So I ain't really watched it. So well, you know, I, I've been I've been noticing you, uh, Brent. You've been like, I mean, if it's not if it's not in your cup of tea, or if no one that is close to you that's that's like raving about it, you're not gonna watch it. Exactly. You know? And so, um, but I, look, I was raving about it. I, I like I like Wednesday. I think it's pretty cool. I've never you, seen I've I, seen, I, seen Smile yet either. I wouldn't put it on the same level as uh, Stranger Things. Stranger Things is killing it, but they had some close, you know, viewing ship. So cool. I am so glad I waited so long to finish Stranger Things because I'm nipping at the teeth. Like, I want another season. I, yeah. I'm so ready. I've kind of forgot about it because I'm like, damn, this is gonna be too long. I'm like, but uh, I lit. I let they finish the series uh, like two weeks ago. I am so excited for another season, but it's not till like later on next year. See, I'm the smart one. I wait, you know. I mean, I mean, they're not going anywhere, but I like to stay with it with the trend. I like to like scream and shout and and make sure that no spoiler alerts come out on you know social media. So I try to stay with it, you know. Yeah, I feel like you know they're giving, you know, they're now. I'm gonna say two things here. I think they're kind of pushing it back a little bit too far, but they're also amping that excitement up for the fans oh, yeah. to come. So. Yeah, and then you got the tour coming in. The tour is going to be that placement. That is going to be that w- that one thing that's going to hold them tight until the uh, until the series is out, uh, the season is out. But I, I remember when they post, someone posted for Stranger Things the first episode of season five. I got so lit. I was excited. Mm-hmm. I was I was ready. I'm ready for them to start production and get going. They're here in Atlanta. I'm going to try to f- find my way to the set. I'm dead serious. Brent, you coming? Yeah, I'm on the way. Yeah. So- I, I wanted to talk about something. Yes. And it's kind of with the same aspect of The Last of Us, right? We have this new horror TV show video game. Has anybody been keeping up with the production? It's in production as we speak of the Five Nights at Freddy's movie. Yes. Is anybody excited for that besides me? starts in February next month um, in New Orleans, yes. Um, but they're getting ready. They're getting- yeah, Blumhouse is taking lead on it. Yes, Blumhouse is their movie. Yes, yes. No, I'm not. I'm not a hater. I'm not gonna hate on anything. But I played the game on my phone. Uh, but the Freddy I know is Freddy Krueger, the real one. But you know, I feel like this is too childish for me. I feel like this is gonna be a childish movie because the games are very childish, in my opinion. But you know, for me, watch it. I'm not sure. For me, Brent, it's, it has to be the storytelling. It has to be the storyline, the plot. If it's I mean, depending on how they go with it, I mean, it could be you a... Remember as a kid, Chuck E. Cheese, and you you know how he would stand there and it looked real scary, then all, and when all the lights cut out, he would people think he would move around at night. That's how that is, Freddie. From... His eyes would be cocked to the side. Yeah. yeah. Oh, oh, listen, I saw Chuck E. Cheese when it was original. That was worse. So seeing it now, I mean, it's like, okay. But um, wow. yeah, man, I, I, yeah, I'm, I'm very aware of uh, Five Nights at Freddy and and uh, and I think it's a cool concept. Let's see what what happens. You know, 100%. I'm so ready. 
I am so ready for this movie that, that uh, I'm hoping they keep the same feel and the aesthetic of like the first couple games. I don't want them to shift over. I would love it if they end the series around what uh, the fourth game around that feel because they it is beautiful. I love the series. I love the idea of it. I think it's a great concept. And at the height of the popularity, I know another animatronic horror movie came out with uh, Nicolas Cage. Uh, yes, I was going to say that. Oh, uh, that was fantastic! I love. It was such a good time. Yeah, that that was cool. You know, look, I, I felt like the story could have been more fleshed out, but I was excited to see it. It was called Willy's Wonderland, and I think they someone did it because it was on the it was on the sports of you know Five Nights at Freddy, um, uh, getting you know popular, and mm -hmm. at that time I don't think Blumhouse had the movie. They didn't have the rights to it. Uh, they're acquiring the rights for it, but I think someone just did um, kind of I don't like Scott a, wanted to sell it yet. It was still his baby. He was still flushing right, out. Right, and then right. think about this. Uh, what about the other one? Willie's, not Willie's, uh, the Banana Group uh, with the other animatronics. Yes. You know, I didn't. I, I, I know what you're talking about. I'm trying to look for it. It's like the uh, Bananas Group with the. Big Isn't it based off like an old Hanna Barbera show? Uh, I believe so. Like, um, I know my mom used to watch them when, when it's I was, a good one. Um, I enjoyed it. I keep forget that's one of oh, it's the banana splits movie back Have y'all have y'all seen the uh now it's popping a lot, like it's going around like ads and everything. It's a new movie coming out, and I think we should add it to ticket or skip it for a hundred percent. It's called it has Batista in it from WWE. It's called Friday or something. It's about a big tsunami coming, it has an Asian child, there's a cabin in the woods or whatever. And it I think yeah, we did it. Know. Don't knock uh, knock at the door. Yeah, don't knock at the door or whatever. Yeah, we did that like two weeks ago. Oh, we did that? Okay, I didn't know. Probably a little bit behind here. That's all right. That's yeah, all right. it was M. Night Shyamalan. I, I'm excited for that one guy because I'm hoping he's back on his uh, what he used to do. You know, I think he did a fantastic job with the signs. I love that movie. That was one of my first, that was one, I think, one of my original horror movies that I watched. And I know everybody, especially around my age group, when that alien walked across and uh, what's his name? Uh, Walking Phoenix. Was, oh, my God. That scared the hell out of everybody because I watched it on a big fat TV. You remember it with the big back ends? Mm. Yeah. And two in the morning. It scared the hell out of me. I want to say this. Um, I can't wait to watch that movie as well. But I did hear that there's something wrong with the children. It is a Blumhouse movie that just recently went to. Yeah. Party. Uh, they're saying that it has mixed reviews. Some people don't like it. Some people are saying that it was. Um, yeah, we did on to get a ticket as well. Yeah, we did that. On, on t uh, yeah, yes, we, we did. Need, hey, I think we need to watch that guys for a movie review and do something. Uh, like yeah, that. I mean, look, all these movies are going to to the platform. We should be watching them. I mean, um, you're right. That could be every other, you know, bi weekly uh, movie review. But let me just say this: a lot of people aren't not liking it. They're not liking this one. They're saying that um, the way it's presented, it could be offensive. So, really? I would, yes. like, uh, like how offensive? Um, let me just say this. Uh, Parents ain't too happy with it. No, let me just say this. I'm going to go to um, Nightmarish um, Conjuring. I don't know if they want me to say this, but I know Shannon, who is the owner of that um, movie review, um, uh, movie review source. Uh, she is quoted in a lot of these horror movies. Um, she said something that was really, um, I, I, I mean, that was that caught my eye, and I'm going to try to read it. Give me one sec as I get to my Facebook. So we're Facebook friends. Log in, y'all. But yeah, she said something that kind of took my my ear, and I was like, oh no! And then I heard some more. So. But I want to restate what she's saying here because it really is uh, something that I was like, "Ooh, ouch!" Mm -hmm. uh, I don't now. If I'm not mistaken, aren't they? I know I'm kind of segueing here. I don't mean to. I was just now thinking about it. I seen it the other day. I'm pretty sure they're. I think we did take it or skip it on. I'm not sure, but are they doing another Saul movie, a Jigsaw movie? Yes, they're doing. That, that is in my lineup. 100%, but I have not done ticket or skip. It's too far out. I like to keep, uh, especially with the bigger movies, I like to keep it kind of within two weeks or about a month of the movie, just to, with the hype train. Yeah, obviously, we're going to try to ride the hype train. 
Because when we make the thumbnail, we're going to put the big movie on the thumbnail. I'm either going to watch it without John Kramer, but I would like to have John Kramer in it because he's a legend. Or I think that's the guy that plays him, John Kramer. Yeah. Or his character name. Okay, so this is what she said, and, I, and I'm just, re and you guys, do not quote me. This is from her personal source. I don't think she... You can quote Willie. She, she didn't put me, she didn't put this comment out there. Normally, again, her quotes are on the, like, are on the major... Um, on point. Oh, no, they're they're on the major movie posters. Like, she has one, uh, Infinity Pool, that's coming out. Her quote is on Infinity Pool right now as you speak. So, anyways, I want to read this. She says, something wrong with children is a huge disappointment. It features unlikable characters, zero uh, tension, and a story that is nothing short of offense, offense, offensive for its mental illness, specifically bipolar disorder. Mm. So, right there, when she said bipolar, you someone claimed it. I don't know if it was Hubert or Gerard. Someone said, look, the guy is probably the guy's mind uh, is, is, is playing tricks on him. But uh, this is a spoiler alert. Bipolar disorder is 2023. 20, there is no excuse for being so tone deaf. There's something wrong with children. So uh, I want to see what I want to see what, what she's saying. About I, what I, I'm now I'm now curious about this because, you know, somebody uh, sit there and claim. You know, they, you don't know, have, look, bipolar disorder is a real thing out there. And unless you've been around them and work with individuals or even have family members who have bipolar disorder, I don't think you really have a reason to speak upon it. You know, I work with individuals. I've had patients who, who literally one day thinks I'm their best friend. And within that two minute conversation, thinks I'm Satan and I'm straight wow. up. And I want to, if you're going to sit there and make outlandish claims and stuff, you better back it up, you know. I, well, well, I'm not saying she doesn't or not. I'm just, I'm hoping. Yeah, well, let me clarify this. She's not uh, diminishing mental illness of bipolar. She's saying that in this, oh, okay. in this time that we're in now, a movie shouldn't be so offensive towards bipolar. Oh, yeah, 100% what you're saying. Now, correct me if I'm wrong. I'm having a brain fart here. Ain't bipolar is where you have two different personalities? No. Bipolar is your uh, personality can... Uh, it's like more of an emotional switch, in my opinion. Been and I'm day. no professional. I'm no professional, but my per my personal examples is I had an individual. Oh, I can walk in. One day you're something, and some day you're one day you're not. No, it's not uh, one day. It's literally within minutes. I could have a patient. I walk in the room. Hey, buddy, how are you doing? He's like, you, F, you, get out of my room, this and that. And then I walk out. I come back in. I'm like, hey, Mr. So-and-so. He's like, hey, buddy, how are you? And let me tell you. It is like a switch that cutting light on and off, and it's not their fault. It's a chemical imbalance in the brain. Right. It, it is crazy. It is literally like horror movies sometimes. Play tricks on you, basically. It's, it's major mood swings that will contradict each other. Um, and you would look at, you know, most people. I remember <laughs> when I'm doing events, some people's like, "Oh, Willie, he's bipolar." <laughs> <laughs> Y'all yeah, see yeah, it. You have a different person or uh, mood swings. No, but it's it's what it is 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 major mood swings. It's major, you know. Um, it, it seems like there's two characters in there, but it's really not. They're just contradicting each other, and um, and it could be kind of scary. It could be kind of so, frightening. And some sometimes they get can be mixed diagnosed from multiple personality disorder. That is I'm another sure. one. Ain't it that called like I'm like I'm not being rude here. Is it called something like called it's like maniac depression or something? No, no, manic depression no. is another disorder. That's like manic depression is an uncontrollable depression where your body releases an ungodly amount of chemical. It's a reverse serotonin. Serotonin is the positive one, right? Am I? I believe so. It's the I'm reverse. Not, it dumps. I'm not, I'm not all in this. I'm. I'm. We don't have a fact checker uh, today, so. I know, but I mean, I have bipolar up um, already up, and yes, it is a mental. Um, Diagnose. Uh, it does. Um, uh, there's a lot of symptoms. Um, we can put up the uh, the link so that people can get to it and read it about it. But uh, it is a real thing. And and there's some people that say, "Hey, I have. I'm bipolar, and I'm taking meds. Uh, it, uh, it is a tr uh, treatable mental illness." Um, I mean, I I kind of do agree with her comment about like kind of not making kind of making fun, not making fun. But it, you got to think it's a it's a movie too. 
Yeah, and and yeah, it is. And so whoever um I don't know the writer, but yeah. Um I wanna life, see it. Life imitates art. Life imitates art. All right, guys, so now we have Fangora. Fangora oh, hold up. You have a ad read. So I'm skipping around because okay. the thing uh, was longer, but yes, I do know. Thank you so much, production manager. I'll own it. So we have so Fangora Chainsaw Awards. Um is happening. Uh, they have uh, released their uh, their predictions. Bangoria, excuse me, have released their uh, their categories so that we can vote. Okay, so this is a award show for horror movies where the fans can vote. All right, we're wow. going to do our segment is we're going to go through this these um, these noms and see what is going on. See our prediction. Um, and then what we're going to do is we're going to play a game within our host. So, Kat, I hope you're watching at home or I hope you watch this. So let me just say this to all the co-hosts so that they know. Whoever loses. I already know this is going. we will have a scary challenge. Now, what is a scary challenge? A scary challenge is a bet that us, co our, us hosts that we will have amongst each other. Um, and we could bring it to a segment. I'm bringing it to this segment here. Um, and so uh, instead of winning, there's no winners, you know, there, but there's a loser. And the loser will have a challenge. The challenge could be anything that we want them to, that it, whatever is a scary challenge that we um, present to them. And they have to face it and they have to, like, you know. When is the awards? What date? The awards dates are not final. Uh, We're they doing are, free stuff before. They're, they're not final. Uh, they're... I, um, they just on on the website it says it's not final. Well, maybe if every can line up, the stars align. Maybe the loser might have to do something at Fear Expo. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna try to we're gonna figure out what what other gonna position the award show, and then we're gonna stream or try to have a show with their award show. And if, and if if you are watching at home, and if you guys would like to tag along with us, go ahead and do so. Yeah. Um. And speaking of, we have uh, Fangoria's. Uh, Fangor you can go to Fangoria.com for vote. This is your voting um, link to start your votes as well. Um, and you can go with along with us today and figure out your predictions. Are you guys ready? I am ready. Oh, yeah. I've already started. Now, guys, the slides are all over the place. So if we can, someone just keep track of what category we're on. Um, but we're only doing a limited amount for the show today. But there's 19 categories, okay, guys? There's 19 categories that we got to vote. And we're going to put on our votes today, okay? All right. Yeah. So, you guys ready? Um, yep. Can you look up stuff on Google, too, if you want to, I think. I don't know. Like, what do you mean? I mean, like the best wild, best wild release movie. Yes. I mean, of course, you know, do your homework. And, uh, I mean... Let me just say this. When I looked over the nominations, I was like, oh, I missed that movie. I want to watch it. And this is a great reminder. This award show is a great reminder so that we can go back and watch these movies. But I'm excited to, to see what y'all think. Uh, can we please keep track? Please, uh, host, put your prediction by your name on your uh, Google Docs that you have. And let's begin. Here we go. So first we have um, Best First Feature. Okay, we have Blood Relatives. Deadstream, The Sadness, Watcher, and Wait Wait a minute. I'm on the, best, the top one. Again, he, he said it's out of order. The slides are out of order. Okay. I didn't hear. Um, mm. And this is what I was working on like while we were doing the show. So it's out of order. But if we just put our names in each category that we read off, we'll, we'll be fine. So okay. best first feature, just so we're all on the same page. That's like uh, a director's first feature. I believe so. Um, we're all going to the World's Fair. Now, I heard about that one. Uh, but, yeah, I believe so. I believe this is the, the first um, feature of the director or maybe the – I don't know. It doesn't explain itself. Really. I don't think I've seen any of these movies. No. And I have <laughs> There are, like, three categories of Fangoria's that I'm oh. like, I've never heard of this, you know. Let's but, do a shot in the dark with these real quick. This is Yeah, this is one of them. So yeah, I'm gonna guess a shot in the dark. 
Let's go with The Watcher. That's my pick. Now, I heard some good things about The Watcher. Um, so that would be my pick. But Or also, we're all going to the World's Fair. I heard some crazy things about it, and it was in passing. And now, that's exciting. I think I'm going to watch that one. Now, this is a complete shot in the dark. I haven't even seen the trailer for any of these movies. So this is literally just going off the title and off these little images we have in the corner. And I don't, know, I don't even know which image it is, but I'm trying to fit them in my mind mentally what they are. And I'm going with the watcher. And that's my shot in the dark, complete guess Rooney. My my opinion on the shots in the dark can change once I figure this out. I, went, I don't even know what this is, but I went with Deadstream. Deadstream. Okay, I'm going with we're going to the fair. The World's Fair. Ooh. I'm typing that in right now. Let us know what what you're picking as well at home, please. Um, get, get into our comments, slide into our DMs. Let us know what you guys are thinking. All right, oh, let's yeah, slide into the DMs. best limited release movie. So this is someone. This is a movie that does not have the distribution um, that the big uh, blockbusters will have. Oh, oh yeah, I've already I've already put my answer, and you know it's got to be Terrifier too. I'm this looking for it. Where is it at? Second row on the top the docks. Okay. This Terrifier 2, I feel like, has made such a humongous splash in the industry that this is going to be the winner. Unless, oh, yeah, unless, Go ahead, unless something else has, has, has been a sleeper on me, this has got to be it. Terrifier 2 has blown everything out the water. This before, has got to be it. Before you made that um, selection, I wanted to read off the, um, the noms for this category, for the people that are listening on the podcast. We have Orphan First Kills, Resurrection, Something in the Dirt, Terrifier 2, and Mad God. Now, to piggyback off of what you were saying, Gerard, again, how I look at this is, look, what movie made a big splash with no money? And to me, that is Terrifier 2. Absolutely. Because it was, it was huge. When they released it, they released it small, but it, 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 it gained momentum and um, it was it was such a sh uh, show shocker that people gravitated to the social media to talk about it, and then it was it just blew up from there. So yes, uh, Terrifier Two has has to be it. And you got you got that, Brent. Yep. Uh, now we are moving on to best wide yes. release movie. Yes, we got the Barbarian, the Black Phone, Nope, Pearl, and X. Woo! Leave the X out of it. I don't think it has anything to do with it. No, X is the prequel to Pearl. No, oh, when you did the X's, I you know how to use for like the names. Like I did all X's. I don't know if you've seen. Oh, that. I no, that was, you know, it is the movie. Now, now, real quick, I gotta point this out. If you don't know these movies, this this little page is very confusing because there's a movie called X, right? And there's two posters. One is a woman's legs making the shape of an X. And there's another, a woman standing in front of a barn. But because it's cut off, it makes an X. So it's just... Listen, that is the... That that barn is for Pearl. It's really for Pearl. So mm -hmm. X and Pearl go hand in hand. And you're supposed to watch X first, then Pearl. They're, they're related? They're related, yes. They're related. So wow. let, let me just say this. Um, during the time of Yep, That's Scary, with us building this show and building this podcast, we weren't paying attention to the media or just, you know, the sources. And so Barbarian came out <laughs> right when we started. So, of course, we're just now covering it. But, yes, we missed that. Pearl came out after, but X, you know, we missed it completely. I don't think X had the best wide release movie. Um I isn't X about like uh, somebody rented out a barn to film an adult movie, and then like some murders happen? Yes, I believe. Yeah. So. I believe that it had it, it's nope. Black phone are the two um, that are the best white. Release Shoot, I already put my answer. I'm going with nope, 100. percent Going with nope. As well. It's the black phone. Black phone. Nope. I wouldn't say I wouldn't pick black phone because black phone when it first came out. Remember it they did. Downhill. They did. Um, they put it in movie theaters and then they put it in a streaming platform, and so it wasn't. It didn't get hyped as much. But I mean, yes, they were. Put, I mean, look, Blumhouse pushed a lot of commercials for it, 
when it hit streaming a week after. A week after. It wasn't it wasn't um, up to the movie. Okay. See, no. see I get that. I, I get that. But here's my here's why I say Black Phone's gonna win. Out of these movies, Black Phone I would watch again right now. In my opinion. That yes. it, it's not about box office hit, I don't think. Listen, it's not it has nothing to do with how good the movie is. It's saying what movie got the, the the best wide release traction out there to where people say, Oh, we gotta go watch that. You know, no, they probably know. Black Phone was not it because I remember seeing Black Phone in like movie theaters, and people was like, What is that? It had a lot of mystery to it, but it was during the time of you know us getting back to the world getting back to uh didn't it come out in March? Like, was it in a March when it came out? I, I just remember like movie theaters started to open up and then like that the black phone was in there. I uh, you know I, you know something also? I didn't even uh finish uh the black phone and I still haven't seen Nope yet, but I'm just going off like movie reviews it, the reviews of Nope. It was it was Nope because this is on the tele back end of um Get Out and um and that was a huge sensation. So uh I, I would say nope. Here. Okay. So, up next, I, I, we have best streaming premiere movie. We have Fresh, Hellbender, Hellraiser, and Prey, and Wounded. What does that say, Willie? Wounded what? Wounded off. Yeah. All oh, or what? Fawn. Fawn, as in a, a, a young deer. There's something in the way of that, but yes. Wounded fawn. Ooh. Oh God. I'm gonna have to go with Hellraiser, guys. It's Hellraiser. I mean, horror movies and by Aunt Beyond. Just, what's hey, up? Let me just say this: Prey was was uh, uh, premiered on Hulu, and Prey did not have a big push. Now, people did talk about it. You know, it was a Predators um, uh, movie, but it wasn't. It, I mean, look, it, it didn't get the traction that Hellraiser did. I mean, Hellraiser was widely huge. I mean, we had a a female lead. It's Hellraiser for me. You know what? I'm I went with my gut originally. And I did pray, and I'm hoping my rose covered glasses of being such a Predator fan is not going to block it because I feel like Hellraiser is the clear winner. But I'm going to stick to my gut, and I think Prey can be an underdog because I think Prey got a lot a lot more traction than what people suspect because like two weeks before or a couple weeks before Hulu. Got all the Predator movies on there. Right. But listen, Gerard, remember Grim Cuddy on Hulu? Mm hmm They had the same, the same traction. And I, and, I, I, and in order for you to watch that movie, you had to go to Hulu. You had to see it. Mm -hmm. I mean, Grim Cuddy, I didn't even hear anything about. I was like, what is going on? I mean, it was like an article and bloody disgusting. Well, Grim Cuddy, it's also hard with Hulu because Hulu would... Like, Hulu was pumping horror movies out. Yes, they were. I mean, I, I felt like all the streaming platforms was like in competition the earlier. Uh, Hulu won, in my opinion, last year. Moving on. Yeah. Next up, we have Best International Movie. We got Hatching, The Innocence, Piggy, Salomon, and Speak No Evil. Hmm. Saloon. I think I said that wrong. I, cannot I don't. I don't think Piggy's going to take it at all. I didn't get to finish and then I see the whole movie, but I've seen trailers a couple times. Hatching. I'm going with The Innocence. I'm going with Hatching. I, I love the concept. I have not yet got to complete the movie. Don't you just love doing shots in the dark? I'm going with Speak No Evil. I don't come, down here, come down here, Gerard, where your name is. I realize that. Thank you for pointing it out to me. You're welcome. So, I think this list that we have, especially if we have a, a good amount of time before the release, this list is going to change. I will stick to my guns with Black Phone, Prey, and, and Terrifier 2. I will not touch those. But these other movies that I have not got to see, I will. I'm gonna. I'm gonna. I'm gonna. Might change my answers on these. What is this change like? Uh, we got horror movies and beyond here. I think that's evil trailer. She says speak no evil. I have to say that too. Spread no evil. Spread no evil. I'm gonna change my answer. Spread no evil. Listen, listen. Um, <laughs> I, I just want to say this. This is great. It's a great reminder. Um, seeing these noms. If you haven't seen the movies, go check them out. Um, 
give in to the horror community and just you know support these movies and let us know your thoughts, okay? Ashley, Evil Trez, what movie should we watch this week? Speak no evil. Uh, no, 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 no. She she was saying it again. It was a correction to what she said. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Oh yes, Evil Trust. Tell us what uh, what movie should we uh, watch um, watch next for our movie review? All right, next we have best lead performance. Okay, so this is kind of, this category was kind of weird because normally in some award show they have best male, best female, um, but this is best lead and it's in a mix here. And so I am struggling with this with my selection, but I have a well, you, have, you know, I'm going to go ahead and say mine off the jump. I'm, I'm going to have to go with the Amber. No, 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 you guys, you guys, let's read, let's read the noms here first. So we have, oh my gosh, I can't even see it. Anna Dial, Isabelle. Um, Nana. Let me just read the list, read off the list. <laughs> I'm just going to go off the list. Uh, break, go off the list too. Uh, Anna Dial, I think, I can't see it, but then you got, Isabella, I got the list if you want me to read them. Furman, read off the list, please, because I can't read that. Mia Goth, Rebecca Hall, Danielle. From what? From hey, what? hey, Brent, let me get this. I got a clear image. Yeah, all right. We have we have Anna Dype from The Nanny. We have Isabella Furman from The Orphan First Kill. We have Maya Goff from Pearl. Rebecca Hall from Resurgent. Resurrection, Mike, excuse me. We have Diana Couillet from Nope. I am butchering these names, but it is what it is. We have Amber Mid Thunder from Prey. We have Mike My- Moore from Watcher. Mar- Key Palmer from Nope. Maka Monroe from Watcher. <laughs> Palmer from Nope. Josh Rubin uh, from A Wounded Fawn. And Taylor Russell from Bones and All. Okay. All right. So. <laughs> We got to designate somebody to read names. Where is Cat? Cat would have killed this. Okay. All I'm saying. Cat is Cat uh, she she's going to make it today, uh, which we're so excited for um to come, but she having power issues. So her whole neighborhood is um lost power. So they're working on that in California. See, this but, is what uh, happens when the brains of the operation is gone cuz Cat would have uh, shut up, boys. We he would It's Anna Doip and she would have killed it. I know. I can see her doing it. You know, you know it, Will. You can't deny. It. You know her the longest. Listen, I was I was really pleased to see Kiki Palmer on here for Nope. I think she did a great job, but I'm leaning more towards um, Isabella from Orphan First Kill. Really? I'm, I'm I, yes, uh, because yes, I'm going back and forth. Um, see, I, I'm a little bit different. I might have to. I'm leaning toward kind of. She said, "My but okay." Now, now, not, not really, not really. But I'm kind of also, my, I'm really leaning toward Amber Myth Thunder because that's Prey. Now she played a really good role. Now let me just say this: I did not see Pearl. I'm going to watch that. Um, but it's just one of those things. It's one of those movies that slipped my. I'm going to tell you why Amber is going to win this Myth Thunder. Exactly because she carried the movie. Not only did she carry the movie. Like a good eighty percent of the movie, she's the only character. Think about it. Besides the dog, if the dog was on here, dog would win. That's all I'm saying. So but the dog. she let leave the dog alone. He's cute. She led the movie. Who is the other individuals in the movie? Her brother dies within the first thirty minutes. Yeah. The tribe is all background characters. Then you have the predator, who's a non-speaking individual, right? And then you have the trapper, the Skinner, that one guy. He's dead within twenty minutes on being on the screen. She led it. She made me feel, and she made me feel like she can take on the predator. Okay, that's she wins it. That's good to know. But I mean, just because you got more screen time doesn't mean you're gonna win this award when you when it come compares to the others. I mean, I'm just saying there are some other killers movies she, out there. She made me feel. I cannot, wait, I cannot wait to see Pearl. I mean, Orphan First Kill. I I was screaming at the end. Have you guys seen Orphan Orphan's First Kill? No, I watched like the first like twenty minutes of it, and my internet cut out. My whole family we watched it, and because we we like orphanage and uh... oh, orphan was such a good movie. Yeah, or yeah. Up next, we got best director. We got Zach Krieger, a bar- barbarian. We got. Can you read those, Gerard, for me? I cannot see them for some reason. We have Zach Krieger from Barbarian, D. 
David Cronenberg from Crimes of the Future. Chloe Okuno from Watcher. Jordan Peele from Nope. And Ty West from X. Okay. So mm -hmm. for me, it falls in two, two of these movies. Okay, yes, I heard great things about Watcher, but it falls into Nope and Barbarian. And then, I mean, just after seeing Barbarian, I have to go with Zach on this one. Same. I'm going with Zach. It's a watch. It's got to be. I had so much fun with Zach, with uh, Barbarian. It was so lighthearted and continued to get me thinking. That's got to be my most enjoyable movie this year. Yeah, we all he, he, agreement on one. He did. I know, right? Which is crazy. But he did a really good job on that one. And um, I was we, excited to see it. I think that's all we have for our Fangorio Chainsaw no, Awards. No, we, no, we got one more off slide. I had to break it up in two. Here's the second one. Moving on, let's see. We got best screenplay. Hold on. Best screenplay. Okay, good. All right, here we go. Best screenplay. We got Ro oh, God. Hold up. Robert Cargill and Scott Dickerson from The Black Phone. We got Zach Krager, Barbarian. We got Mia Goth and Ty West, Pearl. We got Jordan Peele with Nope. We got Seth. I don't know if you pronounce that. Rest is, uh, and Seth Will Rice Tracy. and Will Tracy. Rice and Will Tracy. From, I can't see the movie. There's something in front of it. The menu. Go off go off your list, you guys, uh, if you can't see the graphics. Okay, so this one was a, a battle for me. I, I think I, I picked this. It has to be Black Bone on this one for me. Because it was it was uh, it was different. It was um, it made you think a little bit. I'm like, what's going on when uh, the kid was talking to the other dead kids? You're like, um, but again, I haven't seen Pearl. I haven't seen Menu. I don't know. Just going off what people say, I think I'm gonna go with uh, Pearl on this one. Pearl, now, I heard great things about Pearl. I just haven't seen it yet, so. Same. So. What do you think, Gerard? I really wish I'd seen Pearl now and the menu and Nope, because I haven't seen any of these three. You can, but once I get this list, I'm locking them in. I think a black phone. I, I, I think it's such a, a unique spin on a ghost story. I loved it. I, I enjoyed the hell out of it. I can't believe it took me so long to watch that movie. I know. Again, that's one of those movies that in, in transit, uh, in, in, in getting back to our normal life. We took a whole year off like with okay. four movies this year, I think. Yeah. I really because you have to understand, you, you, we were, I mean, just like the hot industry navigating through COVID, the movie industry was navigating through COVID. So, and they have more rules than what we have in the hot industry. So it's crazy. Now, did the black phone kind of give you a, like a Ted Bundy kind of feel in a way? Yeah, I, in, a, in a way. I mean, I was listening to one of these podcasts. I'm not going to name here. Um, but, um, oh my gosh, who's the guy who played the black phone? I'm, I'm losing it. Hold on. Let me get it. Black phone. It's just a Google search away. So, we we gotta nail down. We gotta watch like two movies this week. Ethan Hawk. I mean, we were, I was listening to him and his backstory, like how he built his character and just the backstory that he had, and then him going going home to his kids with that character and how he had to like put it aside, you know, just to you know be with his family. Uh, it's, it's very interesting, you know, how he did that. And, and he did a great job with um, Black Phone. And I just think that the concept was really good. I think you he know, was, it has a good running with the, for the screenplay. I got to give I gotta give Black Phone one of these credits. It's always stuck out to me. When you finally meet the killer, it's instant. He's got the kid. It was never like you saw the van, like little teases. I felt like he was going to run into the kid. Oh, that's my target. No, it was literally boom, and he took it. You remember was, with the balloons? Was a in there. Real quick. I mean, and I love that. Sorry, we had to. I, I have a cough and fit still, wrong. But uh, I enjoyed it so much. I can't get over 
this movie. And I'm sad to say Black Phone is better than Barbarian. Barbarian was a fantastic one, a very much a fun one. But if I want to have a serious horror movie and a serious sit down and think, I love the idea. It was it, it made maybe you, I like kidnapping movies. It made you think a little bit. You know what I mean? It made you Is the kid crazy? Right. It, it, you know, and then also when they rebuilt the house, you would think that you were in the original house all the whole time, but really you're not. And the phone kept ringing. It was like there was nothing on the line. <laughs> it's it's a great screenplay for me. I I thoroughly enjoy that. It kept me on on edge. Not to oh, mention the bro. twist they did with the brothers. The guys in their coke daddy's like, oh my god, that's the <laughs> killer. He's fucking with the cops. He's yeah. like, he's got coke. He's fuck. No, nope! that's the brother's killer. I mean, that's the killer's brother. Oops. Isn't that crazy? That's I ain't seen that part yet. Yeah, you haven't seen that one. You you uh, I think you what crashed or something. It was a boring film. Mm, it wasn't. I First enjoyed fifteen it. minutes, I quit. Wow, really? To me, I didn't really. Well, like it. I would. I can tell you right now when I watched it. He didn't I it. I got off of work. I'm like, hey, I gotta start watching some more. I I put that on immediately. I didn't sleep that day. I went to work the the following day like jacked. I was like, so excited. I stayed up the whole day. I Other stayed place up. all day. Eighty slasher movies. I don't do anything well, else. Yeah, that's also your genre. You are a big slasher guy, and that's something you, it's I, I like about our aspects. You know, you love slasher movies. There's variety here, but the, what's so great about it is like these 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 children that was uh, that was murdered were coming beyond the grave for revenge. <laughs> And they helped this boy out, and it was so good. It was I enjoyed it. It was fun. Now, did he get arrested? Yes, at the end. But where was the was the troubling part? Because they were trying to find the house. They were trying to find them, and uh, and you you have to watch it to see. All righty, moving on. Best score. We have Michael A. Bells, A. Bells from Nope, Jeff Barrow, and Ben. Was it? Salisbury from Men, Tyler Bates, and Tim Williams from Pearl. We have John Carpenter, Cody Carpenter, and Daniel Davis from Halloween Ends. Uh, could someone take that one? Because I can't see it. Uh, Trent Risner and Atheist. I can't oh, see it. I'm sorry. Atticus Rose from Bones and All. Got it. I got you, Brent. Okay, so. We know it's not Halloween ends. No, 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 no. Looking at this category, I, I had to look at it over and over and over again. It's Pearl. It could have been Pearl. It could have been no. Men and Bones and all, I don't think they got to win. But you have to give credit where credit is due. This one is Halloween ends. No. Now, I was thinking that, too. It, I was like, yeah. It yeah. It like homage to, and it brought a new twist to it. And the music, they were playing hits after hit after hit. The only good thing about Halloween is was the soundtrack. I I said that to you, Brent. I was like, look, the sound, the music is dope. Because they had every iconic rocker music in it. And it and it and it moved, it transitioned and helped move the scenes along. And I enjoyed it. This is a Halloween ends. Now the best score is more for like can you explain a little bit to me what that's yeah. about? Best score is the music, the background music, the music that plays. It could be um, some movies it's, will play popular music. Some it's people will. Yeah, it's a feeling. The most feeling. I just it's, don't know how I don't notice shit. It's like some of this shit. I'm like, what is that? No, no, you you do notice it. It's just not you're just not like paying it close attention to it. Because I remember we were watching this movie. Oh, was it was it uh, Barbarian? We were watching a uh, Barbarian, and you're like, mm -hmm. oh, this music is like Stranger Things. Remember you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the score. That is the music that's being played. That's the emotion feelings underneath that scene. It makes a movie. I'm telling you. I know uh, plenty of composers for movies, and it really does. And I don't remember the music from Halloween Ends though, so I'm, I'm gonna go with nope on this one. No, uh, Halloween Ends. I'm trying to tell you. What? Go watch it again. It has some hitters on there. And trust me, all of it. You know. You know, Brent. You see them every day. So I'm surprised you didn't. Yeah, but you didn't pay close attention to it. Well, on, that on movie this, was shitty. I was looking out for Michael. Where's he at? You know. <laughs> no, but you got it. You got it. You when you when I watch Halloween Ends, I want to feel like it's a Halloween Ends or a Halloween movie. And it wasn't. That, and that did it for me, music musically. Okay, you know, I'll go with Michael then. The you, you know something I want to say with the score and something is you got to have score. You got to have a good music. Music can music and sound can break a movie, but something on the reverse. 
if you can take away the sound like the quiet place did it can do the same oh yeah there, I mean, because you're 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 you're, you're altering um perception you're you're changing the focus of the viewers so yes um you could play to those strings um, wouldn't it be funny if quiet i know it's the wrong year now but wouldn't it be funny if quiet place won't board best score <laughs> Hey, it has music to it. It has a couple of songs, but um, best creature effect. Oh, yes. yes. So Alec, we have Alec, go ahead. and Tom Woodruff Jr. for Prey. Uh, we got Gustavus H Hogan Hatching. We got Troy Larson, Patrick McGee, Mark Villalobos for what is that movie? V H S ninety nine. We got John Nolan for Jurassic. World Dominion. Get out of here. And we Thanks. got Grulu. I can't pronounce his words today, guys. His his names. Oh, let me see. Let's get yeah. there. <laughs> so sorry. See from Nope. So we do apologize for butchering these names. Um, if any of y'all watching out there, I apologize. And, and, and let me just and let me just say this: all three of us that's on the show stayed up way too late. I don't know why we do this, but we were just, you know, we're up way too late. Some of us didn't even sleep at all. Actually, all of us didn't sleep. Um, but yeah, um, so bear with us. But I just want to say this. Um, looking at this list here, I had to go with this one, and it's Prey. I'm going with Prey, too, 100%. It's Prey for me. Hmm. I'm not sure I'd go with a, a hatching. <laughs> I, I want to go with Prey 100% because I love the Predator design. This I think this had one of the best Predator designs and it's very barbaric. But at the same time, you know, John Winston's FX with the Jurassic World is always fantastic to see those puppets. I'm a big fan of Amatron Geyser, but I'm not going to go with that because it's too much CGI. I can't go with Nope because I know that's a bunch of CGI and that's I don't like CGI like that. But something that's catching my eyes is the, the imagery and all that we had from the trailer from Hatching. And then the VHS, something I love about this, it has got that little classic old horror style. So, God, I'm gonna go with pray. I can't. I can't. To me, to me, you could cheat that. You know what I mean? When you when you do dated effect, you could cheat. Mm -hmm. So I just I, I don't I don't know. About Next that. up, we got best documentary feature: the found footage phenomenon in search of darkness, part three. Living with Chucky, Pennywise, the story of it. This Guar. Guar? Is that like the band Guar? I believe so. I think so. I don't know. I'm sorry, guys. I'm not even typing in the doc. I know. I just noticed that. I know that you weren't doing either, but I know you're multitasking and doing other things. So. So this is the I, will, I will remember my stuff as well. So. Thank you, and you guys just make sure uh, hosts that you guys put in your prediction. Uh, this is the band um, uh, Gerard, so yes, you're right. Um, so, so my pick was the Pennywise story of it. Look, this, is I, this category, I'm not really like big on. I thought this, I thought between yeah, Lady me neither. With Chucky and Pennywise, the story of it would would be it. Um, I don't think War will have a chance in this one, but again, this is the people voting, so it can change if everyone votes. Don't, and don't. Do I'm gonna I'm, uh, see. I'm going with uh, Chucky on this one. Living with Chucky. That's what don't I'm deny War. I, I I do agree. Chucky has a big opportunity to take this because he has that big hit TV show and stuff, and it is always classic. But War has such a a, a class. Have y'all listened to Guar? No, I have not. It's a joke band. It is lifting, but they wear these big ass costumes and they're hard rock and they're crazy. They have bound to have an interesting, like the movie The Dirt, uh, uh, with uh, ah, uh, shit. Who is that band? Well, um, I, have, I have a fun fact about Guar. I actually helped produce a show for them. I had them at one of my shows. Um, and it's like you seen the costumes then. Yeah. Oh, yes. They're elaborate and they're like all apocalyptic and weird and they on you, platforms and everything. You and tell they, me there was not a bunch of random drugs and whatever else that's going to be such an interesting documentary. What would you rather see? A documentary about a rock and roll band 
who's going to sit there and party hard drugs and wear those costumes? I mean, when I met them, I didn't see that side. And I well, you were also the producer, I, profession. I, I thought Wait that. a minute. Now, is this – now, I watch a guy on uh, on YouTube. His YouTube channel is named The House of Masks. He collects a lot of Slipknot masks. He yep. actually owns a Guar mask. It has the teeth and stuff. It comes out, and it's just the mm -hmm. face right here, and it's the teeth. Is that one? Is that Guar? Yeah. No, okay. no, no. Guar is not masks. No, Guar no. is whole – He's saying like, that one of the masks from the band members. He yeah, had. I yeah. want to make sure you paint this picture for Guar is wholeheartedly full on like medieval sci-fi sci -fi. costumes. Yep, 100%. it's full on and they play those instruments. And now, I never heard of the band until I produced the show. Which, if I mean, everyone that was there uh, was in support of this band. Okay, and 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 please do not kill me, guys out there. Uh, I love Guar. I, you know, once they played and they were part of the show, I fell in love with them. But it's not a band that I would follow. Uh, I'm, you know, and uh, but I did not hear about that band <laughs> until we were doing the show, and then they showed up, and it was crazy because they had their gear and everything, and they're very humble. I didn't see the drugs side of it. I really didn't. I mean, you're also on the professional end of it, you know. Yeah, but I've seen drugs when one of their songs is literally called Gore Gore. Yeah, I can't imagine their mosh pits. Like the guy who let me see the uh, I forget their name, um, his name, but the, main guy, the main guy right there. Hey, can we can we pull up a cut a picture of them of yeah, their I, costumes? Like yeah, we got a picture right here, but I don't know how to show it to you guys. I'll bring it in right now. Give me one second. Dude, Dude this guy's wicked. Like the lead singer. He has like horns. And lead singer, yes. He was really cool, cool and chill. He was so chill. Um, Didn't have a problem with him at all. Not one bit. And he has uh, like, uh, it's kind of like, uh, what's that band that wears the shoulder pads with the spikes? Yes, yes. It, uh, or Kiss. Kiss. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, Kiss in a way. Um. But this is more of the rockers, and they and they're more underground too, wouldn't you say? Yeah, they're kind of like an ICP. Mm -hmm. See, so yeah, I'm not ICP. Uh, now, I mean, I had ICP too at one of my events. Did you? Uh, did y'all ever talk about? It? Did y'all ever uh, 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 know a band named Primus? No, never heard of that. They one. do. My name is Mud, Mister Crinkle, uh, <laughs> Mister Crinkle, the Bear went over the mountain. Little Pig, Little Pig. They did a cover of uh, uh, the Charlie Daniels band, um, Devil Went Down to Georgia. He, the Primus wrote the song for South Park. Yeah. Wait, the Primus, is that what, did we use that for, you know, what I'm talking about, for The Devil Went Down to Georgia? No, we didn't use their version, but. Um... No, no, we just used a, no, he, type in, don't play the song, because it's copyrighted, on your own time, type in Primus, Mr. Crinkle. Or my, and watch that music video. That will set the tone for Primus. Mr. Crinkle. And it's just a guy in a pig costume playing a stand-up bass. Hey, and what's not what's neat about Primus is they don't have a lead guitar. They have a lead bass. I'm going to check it out. Next up, we got Best Series. We got Cabinet of Curiosities, Chucky, Stranger Things, What We Do in the Shadows, and Yellow Jackets. Stranger Things. Next uh, hold, on. hold on, hold on, hold on. <laughs> Oh, yeah, yes. I saw this. It was Stranger Things all the way. Sorry, you, like, these series cannot, cannot, I mean, I say cannot touch Stranger Things. I mean, Shit, it's, I'm going with Cabinet Curious. You know you nah, like. I'm going with Stranger Things. I watched the first four episodes, and I was like, it is curious. You got to be curious to watch it. I mean, it doesn't fit. First off, uh, it, first off, um, I gave up on what we do in the shadows. I watched the first two seasons. I gave up on it. Well, yeah, and then and Captain's Curiosity is a good, is a decent series. I've seen the first episode or two episodes, but you can't. It's not a continuous series, like a story. It's individual stories. Listen, when I saw this category, I thought they were playing. I thought they were like really like trying to like say, "Hey, look, we love Stranger. Either we love Stranger Things so bad that these categories, like these others, cannot touch Stranger Things. So we're gonna like make everyone vote for Stranger Things. But these these Series, they're good series, but they cannot. I repeat, cannot touch Stranger Things. Imagine Stranger Things don't win it. <laughs> I'm like, who's voting? 
Wait, wait, so what did you say, Brent? I said, I said, I said imagine, imagine Stranger Things don't win. Who is voting? That's that's my question. No, I mean it would be a shocker though if that if Stranger Things didn't get that a nominee for that. Wait, well, did my lab track not go through? Uh, okay, I keep hearing a noise in someone's background. It sounds like a Windows 10 sound, like when you first open up a computer, like ding, like that. And it's not me. I don't know if y'all hear that. I heard it through the whole show. It's like every like five minutes. Oh, no, I didn't hear that. Maybe, have you heard it, Gerard? No. Maybe it's, it's near your station where you're at. Oh, oh. Wait, and by the way, I have I have the camera here. That's them right there. That's Guar. Yeah. See the guy with the big T's right here to the right. That's what I'm talking about. Yeah, yeah. that's the guitarist. It's so funny, like they brought in their like their weapons too. It was crazy when I bet them. They, it was crazy. Uh but a fun bunch. They killed it. It was a great show. Now, what I think is interesting, they got their full-on get-ups and all that, and but they leave their hands exposed. I'm like, cool, it's like still playing an instrument, but could you imagine the drummer's issue trying to play yeah, drums? True. Hey. I think the drummer's the one without the, this face paint right here at the top. Yeah. I, I can't remember. It's been so long. And their mascot, I believe they have another, ma they have a big mascot monster. It's been so forever since I listened to any war. Yeah. Okay. This, all right. Next up, we got best sh best short. We got blink, now, close your eyes, guts, meet friend, oh glory. Now this is one category that I was like, oh no, this is something that is going to lose my interest because I don't watch shorts as much. I really don't. Now, when I was in the film world, yes, I did, especially during these um these film festivals. But this one, I haven't seen not one of these. Me um, neither. Y'all just want to take a dark guess, whatever. I'm gonna say guts because it makes me feel neat, friend. Gutsy. I'm gonna go close your eyes. All right. That's all for I think. Uh, Fangoria. Chainsaw. I think we have one more. Is it not like the best kill? Uh, yes. So there is the best kill, and um, I I gave this to Terrifier too, um, because they had some crazy gnarly kills on there. So Terrifier too, and it's. I say we can all say Terrifier too for that. Well, not, so, seen it. not everybody, but you know, I think we could so, agree with that. I was gonna, so, I was gonna go with Halloween Ends because I feel like some of the kills are pretty cool. What? What? Um, the music and the kills kept me interested during Halloween Ends. I can't believe you. Yes. I did. So there is so many movies on these list. We gotta watch. Are we gonna like? Should we just like? What? What? Which ones are we watching? I think Pearl. Should Pearl. be a Pearl. Pearl. Smile. I ain't seen Smile. Well, I'll watch. No, it. I'm, I'm gonna watch. I'm gonna watch some stuff off this list. I'm dying. I want to watch stuff off these lists because there's so much thing. Because we have a little bit of time, and I want us to come a little more educated than what we have been. And I think Pearl, and possibly maybe X. You know, they're the same movie. I mean, within the same universe. So that's my goal is to watch Pearl is guaranteed this week, potentially X. I think I have a couple days off. I think I'm off Tuesday. <laughs> I love it. You're like, oh, I got some, I got some time off. Let me go ahead and prepare my off days. You get your movies. You get your snacks. That's I cool. mean, I worked, I worked twelve to sixteen hours a day. Like, there's not much time in between, you know. Yeah, yeah. Now that we got a movie theater here that we're still working on and a popcorn machine, I'll just yeah. go right downstairs and just. Are y'all doing a projector or TV? So he did a TV now, but eventually it's gonna be the dro drop down projector. You gonna do the projector? He's having problems. He's having problems with deciding on the projector itself because once you get your projector, then you can figure out your screen. But and that's a and you can go cheap with a projector, but it doesn't work out well. You got to go good with a projector. Well, you have to go good to watch these movies here, you know. But I found his sound system. Um, but I mean, it should be easy. I, I was in audio and visual, so I can help them get this done. But we got a popcorn machine. What's up next, guys? You got a popcorn machine? Yes, we got a popcorn machine. Well, 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 well we got a whole movie theater. Yes, you, 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 got no, you ain't got no excuse not to watch the movie, man. Being that with the pop. Oh, God. Been, like, ever since I moved the podcast, my podcast station upstairs, mm -hmm. I haven't been upstairs anymore, you know? So, all right. So up next, we got um, my ad read, which is all right. 
this is the Halloween and attraction show opens for business February 2nd and through the 5th, 2023 at American Center in downtown St. Louis. Transfer, excuse me, Transworld Halloween and attraction show is the only industry trade show of its kind in the world. There's no other show that has many exhibitors and industry related products for four decades. Excuse me, for four decades, Transworld annual Halloween and attraction show has created the marketplace for the haunted house industry. And it's coming. It's coming real soon. And I, all the vendors are getting ready for it. And I'm just really excited to see or to find out what is new coming up in our industry. So check it out at www.haashow.com. Okay. And also, Transworld's open to the public, so anybody can show up now. Yes, anyone can show up to it. I don't like that, but yes, anyone can show up to it. Yay. Ruins our stuff. Yay. <laughs> but, that, I mean, look, it's, it's, I mean, and I, I really want to get Jen on the show so we can talk about it, too. But, I mean, I've seen bloggers showing our secrets. I've seen kids chilling and like, oh, my God. I'm just like, this is, no. Like, kids, this ain't no fucking. I'm glad I found you. You are all in very serious danger. I will guide you to safety. But I need you to do exactly as I say. You know that you are special. With my help, you can become extraordinary. Help us. Help me. Ready? You can now be immersed into an original Strain of Things storyline combined with special effects of a 3D Universal Studios ride with a telekinetic escape room. Immerse yourself on your own adventure with 11 Michael, Dustin, Lucas, Max, and Will for a very special episode starring none other than, than you. Go to www.strainofthingsexperience.com. Show just this is good. It's a good. I was just thinking about. Okay. I don't know what happened there. I was, I was thinking about Stranger Things, and it's a good immersive show. Like, like it, they do their job. They entertain you for forty minutes, and then they're like, you know, there you go. Uh, I think it was very clever that they bring it. They brought in the cast. And how they did it was very clever. But once you see it, you're like, okay. Um, but uh, again, we're gonna have someone from Stranger Things on our show to talk about it. Um, but yes, it, it was a good show. And I and you know what? Now my dad, Britt, now my dad's like, Stranger Things is leaving February 13th. I want to go to Stranger Things. <laughs> so like now, my mom and dad is going to Stranger Things. So again, Gerard, if you want to see your Stranger Things, come on to Atlanta and get her out, get her done. Because it's gonna leave and it's not coming back again. Y'all ready? Yes. So here, so guys, we have y'all. I'm dead. It is. Um, we know. Sit. I, can I do my segment? It was y'all. I'm dead. Where all the hosts bring their three Halloween horror and driven funny memes in hopes to make the other hosts laugh. Are you guys ready? Oh sure. shoot! Oh shoot! I need someone to um. To stall for a second. Okay. Hold up. Well, we'll, you need us to stall. Right, you need me to stall. I'm going to tell you exactly what it is. <laughs> yeah, stall for a second. You ever sit here and try to do it? Hold up, Hold up. Hold I'm up. stalling. Y'all do tech. I'm going to tell you. I'm trying to is. find something. Where's the video at? Where is the video at? It's down. Uh, it's, it's, I see it. It says y'all did.
Okay, we're back. Thank you so much. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much for doing that. Um, hey, boy, I, I don't mean to cut you off right there. I got to run now. Uh, but if y'all, if we get to get to y'all, I'm dead real quick, then that's cool. Yeah, we're getting to y'all, I'm dead. I'm just uploading it right now. I'm not uh, trying to like rush out of here, but remember what I was telling you earlier. I was, yeah, next time, just tell me. Backstage. I know, ahead of time. I got you. No, backstage. Our, our people don't need to know that you're leaving. All Sorry, right. guys. Just wanted to say, come on here and tell y'all. Okay, here we go. Yo, no, I'm, I'm dead. dead. <laughs> <laughs> Ah, where's the page? Where's like the uh, other? Oh man, it did it again. Oh, well, let me tell you. I, I remember what it says. It said, "Y'all, y'all, I'm dead. Feeling cute. Might move around later." Which I love, man. I we got to pay attention to the graphics <laughs> team. I mean, hello. That's the second time that happened. Okay. I picked. I picked a lot of memes thinking Cat would be here. Y'all, I'm dead. And from that point, little Mikey knew he loved Halloween. Because <laughs> he saw the boobies. It is. All right, y'all, I'm dead. I'm feeling cute. Might call you later. <laughs> y'all, I'm dead when you try to follow a makeup tutorial. <laughs> That's a good one. <laughs> y'all, I'm dead. Me, I promise I won't act weird at the pumpkin patch today. Three pumpkin spice lattes later. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know where he went, Gerard. He just disconnected and took everything with him. He he flashed his nipples on the stream, and that's an automatic ban. That's just what happens. See, band. what happens when you uh, flash your nipples on stream, it just... I kicked out everything. Well, everything's See, gone, boys. That's the end of the show. Put the slide, anyway. put the slide back up. I can't See, have time. I got to run. No. Put the slide back up, please. Thank you. See, you oh can't God. flash your nipples on live stream. Tom. Oh my goodness! Why aren't you not listening? You're not listening. Excuse me. You're not listening. What I'm saying. I'm listening. Put the slide back up. I gotta run. I'll be back. Yes. See ya. Okay. Uh, my slide says, "Y'all, I'm dead. I know what you did. I know what you ate last summer. Look at, <laughs> look at Gerard." I mean, I think we all have been in this situation, you know, after a couple uh, too much candy in the preseason and your, your your costume starts getting a little thick. You know I what mean, I mean? But this was an oversized. He, 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 uh, he's looking pretty. He didn't even get to get a cloak. He had to get the, the, the I don't Walmart even, special I don't even know why how he can slash people this heavy. You know, he slashes at Domino's. Wait, what? Does this change? Is this you again? The slides are changing. I know. They're changing, y'all. They're changing. Oh, he probably skipped it by accident. Did you say all three of yours? Did you do? No, all three? I had one more that was in theme with Trans World this week. Oh my gosh, this is not cool. I know. We had some technical difficulties today, guys. It got did it get moved out? No, it didn't. It duplicated. It, it's got to be like this, you know. Yours duplicated, but I'm gonna I'm gonna do mine for the um, keepsake because in in um, in honor of Scream, I did oh, all my means to Scream related. So, all right, here we go. All right, y'all, I'm dead after going out and <laughs> and stab. Oh my gosh, it got cut off too. After I'm gonna say it from here. After going out and stabbing. Uh, where is it? To going out and snacking? After going out and stabbing, just it's cut off. You just want to come home and relax. And he's on his phone chilling. Um, and that's y'all. I'm dead. If you guys want to check out y'all, I'm dead. That was kind of ruined by the graphics uh, department team because they were probably in a rush. But uh, go on our YouTube page and laugh with us and check out our memes. We tr we try to bring the funny, but um, sometimes they're a miss. But we don't. Yeah. We don't create the memes. We just try to find what's out there to see if we can laugh. But 
I mean, what happens is it, it, it's got to be like one show has good tech, the next show is bad tech. I one know. Has, we got to get that consistency to smooth out, you know? It's so crazy. Like, um, starting this show, we uh, today's show, we were like 20 minutes late. There was technical issues back to back. My laptop, Gatorade fluid fell on it, and then it shut down for six hours. And I was like, oh, my gosh, this is the only thing I have of technology, and I need my laptop. And yeah, get we up and going. I think this whole this whole week we've been late because I didn't get my stuff together till like late early this morning actually take like three or four in the morning. Oh man, I need your memes. Yeah, I know it yeah. made it. <laughs> hey, I am falling apart, you know, with this cough. I can't believe that. Hopefully, nobody's heard me cough this whole show. I've been trying to be You've been muting, and it's it's been making throwing the, the show funny because it's like all dead quiet, and then it pops up, so we know when it's your mic. Yeah, anytime there's like a, a quick, if I'm speaking or I'm about to say something and it's like dead quiet, it's because I started coughing. You know, I said bronchitis. No, bronchitis. The bronchitis. So it's I, the bronchitis. So we do have, we, we, we did not get our uh, clip, scary clip of the week um, on here, but we'll have one for next show. But I just want to say I'm excited for our next show. I can't tell you what it is yet because it's not for me, but I'm excited for it. Thank you. To I my, was in the Gatorade. Thank you to my co host and production manager. And uh, I want to say thank you at home for watching. Thank you uh, for listening. If you're listening on your car, going um, to work Monday morning, uh, uh, thank you for listening and thank you for your love and support. Please remember to follow, like, subscribe, and share our social media accounts so we can continue to engage and while building our horror family. Okay, so till next time, guys, stay scary!